The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Well, hey everybody, it's Ken Krell here. Welcome and good good morning from Bangkok, actually. Um, before we get started, let's make sure that you guys can hear me okay. So if you can, would you do me a favor, just type in the chat and say yes, and tell me where, you're, where you are dialed in from today. I see a few familiar faces here, and I see a lot of new friends. We have, we have a good crowd here tonight. So if you can't hear me okay, um, just t pop in the chat and say yes, and where, where you are coming in from today, please, so we know that you're good. I see you here, Joyce, you're, you're from Texas, um, but I see Lynn and Sue and Suryana and Dee. So just, just pop in the chat if you would, you guys, and that would be super good. I see Chris is in from New York. So yeah, this will be a participative, Sue came in from Australia, great, so it's good afternoon for you, actually, or just about good afternoon, I suppose. Um, fantastic. So, so, and Lynn's in from Australia too. Excellent. Perfect. So we have Suyana and Wilanda. Good. This is going to be a great day. So before we get started formally, just um, a couple of ground rules. Um, over the next hour or so, we have a ton of amazing information that's going to, I think, change your full perspective on the way you're doing business. So uh, if you put your cell phones in the silent or vibrate position, if you would go ahead and... Uh, uh, just t remove any distractions and be prepared to take a bunch of notes because this presentation was custom designed for you guys. In fact, it, it uh, was specifically prepared for us uh, and um, want to make sure you get every morsel. So that's that's the first piece. The second piece of it is that you're going to get the most value when you actually participate and play with us. So talk to us. Use the chat. We'll be active in the chat throughout the the, uh, the session today. So I want you to be able to walk away with as much information and uh, and tools to uh, to change the way you do your business. I think you're going to find it great. So with that said, let me count down to uh, to uh, to uh, to one, and we'll start formally at that point. So here we go. Three, two. Hey everybody, this is Ken Krell. I'm the founder and executive director of the Institute for Totalpreneurship, where we help entrepreneurs become totalpreneurs because totalpreneurs have it all. And today you are in for a giant treat because today we're going to talk about how to buy high profit web businesses for rapid growth. Yes, you can read too, as you see on the screen, but it's more than that. It's really about making a giant change in the way you do business and how you can look at really jumpstarting your future uh, directly from the way uh, you're currently doing things. And I'll, I'll get into a bit of that in, in a minute. But as we as we start today's presentation, I want to introduce you to my buddy and uh, and now co-collaborator. His, uh, his name Whoops, his name is Eric Roberts, and he is sitting right next to me here in Bangkok. How you doing, Eric? I'm great. Thanks, Ken. Hey, gang. How are you? Um, welcome to the webinar, and thanks for joining us today. Um, I will just briefly introduce myself uh, and sort of give you a little bit of a background on who I am and what I do. Um, my name is Eric Roberts. I created a system called The Intervestor. Um, and uh, I, my, I sort of started out in radio many years ago many, too many years ago, in fact, <laughs> um, and uh, had a lot of success there. And as a result of that success, I, um, uh, I built up a multi-million dollar business. Um, and, but I realized that it was, a, it was a business that I took over from my father. Um, and I realized several years in that it really, I wasn't a radio man and I didn't really want to be one. Um, and I actually had a deal on the table to take over a, uh, a number of different radio stations and become the first non-metropolitan radio network in Australia. And uh, I went back to the to the seller and asked them if they were interested in buying my radio stations. And uh, at the time, it was a very strong time in media. We were getting, there were massive prices being gotten, and I gave them a number, and they said yes. And so I suddenly was no longer a radio man. Um, but I'd built up seven, seven radio stations and uh, in a short space of time at a very young age. And as a result of that, I got an enormous amount of media attention, um, and uh, so, which I wasn't very happy about, to be honest with you. I had the kind of – I had Darren Hinch and people like this, with, like the CNN of Australia was chasing me all over the countryside. And so I decided to clear on out of Australia, and I went to the U.S., uh, where a friend of mine was doing a bunch of work. And so I uh, started doing consulting, and essentially it was around 
Um, it, it was mostly focused on the movie business, um, but I did a, a lot of networking and helped do some very big deals there in LA. Um, but I kind of moved, as I spent more time in and out of LA, I moved more and more towards film and I set up a production company with another fellow and we created a film called the uh, called Fern Gully, which was at the time the largest uh, non-Disney animated feature film. And, uh, and it broke a lot of box office records and we did very well with it. Um, after living in LA for four or five years, I kind of reached a point where I, I was oversaturated and I won't go into too much more detail than that, but, you know, I was, I was in my 20s. I was a film producer and very successful, and you can probably imagine the rest from there. So um, what I decided to do was uh, was just to pack up and leave L.A. and leave my business behind there, and uh, and I went and travelled around Australia. But, of course, in true Eric fashion, I couldn't just travel around Australia. Um, so I ended up doing I, – I documented the whole thing and it was right at the beginning the inception of the web and uh, the first digital camera came out and we had satellite phones and so I decided to create a kind of dialogue of, of the trip around the country um, and it turned into what then became known as the world's first travel blog, um, which I, I didn't realise that was what I was doing at the time but that's what I was doing. So I did that for a while and I, I lived on a farm for a while and I really kind of detuned myself from the whole LA lifestyle and a fast paced sort of lifestyle. Um, and I ended up spending about 10 years on a farm creating music. I had a recording studio there and also um, had a plumeria farm or a frangipani farm if you're from Australia. Um, and we grew macadamia nuts as well. So it was kind of exotic, but it was also a lot of work. <laughs> far, far cry from being a movie producer. Yeah, a long, long <laughs> way from being yeah. a movie producer. I planted 20,000 rainforest trees during that time. Wow. Um, so it really grounded me, brought me back to earth a bit. But I had always had a thing for the South Pacific, and I, um, and I on a holiday to the South Pacific one time, I, I came across this fabulous old property that had formerly been a cultural centre, and and, uh, and I decided that it was time to do something different. Um, and so I picked it up and turned it into what later became the largest integrated resort development in the South Pacific. And we had an award-winning cultural center there. And we basically integrated the local community with the resort. So there was a shopping center within our resort and the local community used that. We set up schools and we set up hospitals and doctor services and various other things. So. It was very fulfilling and, and from that period in my life I realised that one of the things that I loved the most um, was being in service to people and helping them wherever I could because that was where I garnered the majority of my satisfaction from my work. Uh, up until that point I didn't really get that. Um, I'd done it a lot but I'd never really kind of put the two together. Now, Fiji was a tremendous success for a long time, but then suddenly it wasn't um, because there was a coup there and at the time there was a whole lot of stuff happened and in a nutshell, I ended up um, losing everything that I had, which was millions and millions of dollars. You make that sound so, oh, I just lost everything I had. Yeah, well, it was very dramatic at the time. <laughs> yeah. I, maybe it's been a few years since then now, but um, and I found myself living um, back in Australia uh, in the back of a 1957 Bandor combi van. Um, so it was, you know, I mean, I landed on my feet sort of, but I owed a lot of money and, and it was a very terrible situation. My 12-year marriage had broken down and <clears throat> as a result. And so, yeah, it wasn't a lot of fun. So I had to find a way to get back onto my feet and it was right in the middle of the global fi financial crisis. And what I discovered was that there was nobody lending any money, particularly not angel investors lending any money for anything at that time. So I really literally had to claw myself back from the abyss moment by moment, step by step, and fingernail by fingernail pretty much. Um, and it was during this time that I, that I basically kind of stumbled across what later became the Intervestor. Um, and, uh, and so that's where I am now. And now I live in Bali, although at the moment I'm up in Bangkok for a while. 
um, we, I just uh, tied the knot with my former girlfriend, who's now my wife. And she should still be your girlfriend. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I like wife. Wife sounds she, good. She's sitting right here next to us. I can. I think she should still be his girlfriend. What, what, do, you, what do you think? <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> and we spend quite a bit of time helping people to look at the uh, look at the way that they create income in a completely different way. These are a couple of the guys that I help on a regular basis. Actually, no, that's a joke. Um, <laughs> these are some guys that I know in Bali, and that was during some celebrations. Now, Ken sort of jumping ahead here. Oh, the second shot was my son and uh, and the sort of wonderful food and things that we eat. And this is, oh, hey, here we go back. Okay. So I'm not sure what the sink is like because often time and the wording and the pictures are different, but that's my eldest son who also lives in Bali with me and helps with, uh, with what we do. Um, and he just had a son of his own, so I'm now officially a grandfather. And uh, then, yes, this is my darling wife um, and one of our kids. I'm not sure if you got. Oh, now, there's, now, wait, okay. now there's, this was this weekend. This was this weekend. So, now, now, I was not married to them. I was just, I was just there for the party. Mm. So that's me. For those of you that don't meet, this is, this is me on the right and uh, the beautiful lady in the center. It was, it was the coolest wedding celebration I'd ever seen. On, on, <laughs> on just overlooking the, 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 the sea and. It was it was pretty magnificent. Actually, we had beautiful drag. We had like a swarm of dragonflies yeah, flying over that's right. us. It was really gorgeous. Actually. So so that's the lifestyle that you're living right now, which yeah. is which is pretty cool. And uh, it's 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 neat. So we're still in celebration mode, actually. So let's talk about what we're going to do today, um, because this is going to be really kind of kind of cool. Mm -hmm. So today we're going to first of all talk about the five key steps to intervesting and what intervesting is. You're also going to learn the sobering statistics of business and how to win because, quite frankly, what you're going to learn is that the odds, uh, and you've realized this, the odds are stacked against people starting their own business and building their own business. So we'll learn how to overcome that. You'll learn the formula for success, not just in intervesting, but really in also building and, and running a business for yourself. And also how to start safely because that's the key to, to your success. A lot of you that are here with us, and I, and I know a lot of you that are here because I'm seeing, I see your names and you know, your members of Results Club and some of our other programs, um, a lot of you have been experiencing huge amounts of frustration and challenge and so on. And, and frankly, your life probably looks a little bit like this in some ways when you think about how much time, energy, effort, love, money, and so on you put into your dream. Um, and maybe you feel like you're a little bit trapped or a little bit frustrated with what's been going on. But the cool thing is that there's a way out. There truly is a way out. Uh, I'm not sure if this is, this is a woman in prison, but she just seemed to capture the, the momentum of what, what I was looking for. Can any of you guys relate to this? If you can, just pop in the chat and say, yes, I do, um, so that we know you're still here. Or even just a why. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> why me? Uh, so this, if, if you can kind of relate to feeling this kind of feeling, just uh, just pop in the chat and, and definitely let us know. Uh, but the, the here's the thing. If you're having a startup business, Lynn says, oh yeah, um, if, if, um, if you're in a startup or in a new business, because some of you don't want to define your business as a startup, but if you're, if you're creating your own business, and most of us as, as online entrepreneurs want to create a business that provides us with, well, the totalpreneur experience, to have the freedom to travel, to be with your family, to do things on your own terms, to be in charge of your own life. Well, as a lot of you have learned, it's not always that easy. So some of the challenges that face us in, uh, in developing a new business include um, number one a whole bunch of time uh, you've got it you, a lot of you are, are juggling family and work and uh, and your new venture and it's hard to get all that done in in a time that gives you just the ability to have the lifestyle that you want so you can take some time and play and have fun and enjoy right um, it also takes a bunch of money when you're building your own business and you know mind you there's all sorts of people that have taught and trained, and I'm one of them, that have said, yes, you can get started for very little, but if you're going to get started with very little, um, oftentimes the results are very little as well. So you've got to put time in it, and if you think of, or money in it rather, and you think about the fact that your time is worth money, it's, it becomes a double scenario there. Next is the element of stress that we're dealing with, uh, and um, I don't know about you, but it's pretty stressful when you run a promotion and it doesn't work, or you try something new and it's a challenge, or you have um, crazy whack job um, people that just 
you know, are difficult to work with, whether they be vendors or customers or partners or whatever, just challenges, which then, of course, has an impact on your relationship with your family, with your friends. Um, if you're too busy working because you've got all the time tied up in all these multiple priorities, then how can you have a solid relationship? Uh, it's just not that easy at all. You know, the one way to make it feel better is to actually be making a whole, whole bunch of money while you're doing all these things. Yeah. And, and although the thing is about as, about talking about a total personal lifestyle is you can have all the money in the world, but that's not really wealth. Yeah. Wealth wealth is is the picture of you with the kids on a rock with, with some of your great friends. That's what wealth is to me. Um, and then last but not least is is the pride and self-esteem issue that comes with not making the mark. The, this this image that you're looking at on the screen is actually a, a carefully chosen image because the odds are stacked against you if you have a startup. 90% of all new businesses fail. 90%. I shot a bunch of video on the beach um, just, just before Eric's wedding uh, about that very fact, and some of you may get to see that a little bit later when I post them. Um, but the fact is that that's a challenge. When you've got a 10% success rate and actually... The interesting thing is that, that I, I looked at some more statistics online. Uh, the the uh, founders of Y Combinator, which is based in New York, and they they fund businesses. They they're they're an incubator. Well, they run a contest for to select which businesses they're going to work with. So not only do, will they choose maybe 10% of those, uh, and then 10% of those become successful. So you're looking really at 10% of 10%, which makes it like 1%. Yeah, uh, it's just it's just not a good thing. So what we want to do is give you a little bit of a of a different whoops a different pers perspective of things, uh, and and really give you the ability to overcome and change odds because this is not a pretty picture, is it? Right. So what our perspective is is to well I saw this image I couldn't resist sharing it with you to keep calm and pick a winner because when you're intervesting and Eric's going to get into that in a, in a bit. <laughs> When you're intervesting, when you're investing in, in an existing business that has a proven cash flow, you can be calm because you're in charge of what you're choosing. Think about this. How many of you guys today, uh, over the past whatever period of, of time in your life, have ever bought a house or invested in real estate? Okay. When you're in the state of buying a property, you're in charge. You get to look at it. Unless you've got a time frame where you've got to move by tomorrow, you can pick your winners. You can pick what you're doing. Intervesting is very similar than that. In fact, I like to think about it as this. If you're going to gamble and you're going to go to the, to the racetrack, intervesting allows you to pick the winner of the race before you ever even get to the racetrack. And that's the cool thing. So you'll be able to know and look and examine. And today you'll learn some of those some of those elements of how to actually pick your winner so that you the, the moment you really get involved in the game, you are already in a positive case. Does that sound good to you guys? Is that what you want to learn today? Because we're going to talk about Winners versus losers, and I'll give you a comparison about new business versus intervesting in just a second. So is that what you guys want to cover today? Because that's exactly what we got planned for you. And I see a lot of yes, a lot of bring it on. All right, excellent. Oh, we'll do that, Tim. Here we go. So let's take a look at our Mr. New Biz, if you will. Uh, and you'll notice that he's in the casino gambling, and that's about his rate of return too, because. He spends a bunch of money on education. I mean, a lot of money on online education or business education. And, you know, if you're like me, you've spent thousands of dollars on online courses. Um, and if you're like me, you haven't been through a lot of them. You've, you've got them and they're still shrink, shrink wrap, which is called, you know, shelf education. What, what shelf we, help. Shelf help. That's it. It's the help you buy that you put on the shelf. Yeah. So so anyway, um, uh, you're, you've got years of time, energy, and effort to build that business. Because remember, you're starting from scratch. It's, you know, here in, here in Bangkok, for example, I don't cook. Why don't I cook? Because I can walk down to the corner and get the most amazing chicken soup um, for a dollar, effectively, US dollar. And I have it in about three minutes, rather than going to the grocery store, buying all the ingredients, which costs more money, takes more time, and I don't know how well it's gonna come out. When I know if I go right down to the corner, I got the best darn soup in the world. The years of time, that's the cooking process, right? So next, we have the, the massive amounts of dollars from negative cash flow. Remember, you're pouring money into your business, but you haven't gotten your return yet. That's not a positive cash flow. That's a negative cash flow. And yes, it's all part of your startup budget, but nonetheless, it's still money going out versus coming in. And that's not stressful. No, no, no. <laughs> Uh-oh. What happened here? Can you guys hear me? Hello. 
Okay, great. Sorry about that. You guys, looks like we we now have a new thing that tells you we, we, you've lost connection or made connection. That's pretty cool. So sorry about that. Can you hear me? Can you guys hear me now? Make just just pop in the chat to tell me. Lynn, can you hear me now? Okay, great, excellent. Okay, so what I was so so we talk about stress. Isn't it interesting that we lose connection? We're talking about stress. For those of you that were wondering, is this live? Yes, it is. <laughs> so with a negative cash flow, this, there's lots of stress. And because you're putting all the cash in, you got no leverage. I mean, yeah, you can use a credit card, but you're still paying it out. So there's not a whole bunch of leverage in this either. And I'm a big fan of leverage, of, of having a little bit of work do a lot of, of, of movement for you. And last but not least, you got a business that's not saleable because it's not cash flowing. So you, don't, you really don't have an asset now. You don't necessarily have a liability. Well, you do actually if you've got contracts for web hosting and, and, and commitments, right? So, and especially if you've done financing to, to try and boost your business. Let's take a look at Ms. Intervestor right now who has a completely different scenario. First of all, um, you do put some money into education because you want to learn what you're doing, but not nearly as much. You don't have to because the leverage of actually getting an investment uh, is going to, f first of all, shave off years of time, but also because it's already producing and earning for you, you don't have to be um, as focused on the growth side of things. You're just going to be actually making some fine tuning on it later on. So you'll put money into the actual investment, which shape, which basically buys yourself out of the, the bondage of time. Next, you've got instant cash flow, instant cash flow, uh, because the day you close on that property is the day that the income from the business comes to you. So the day you close, it's like being in real estate and buying a rental property. The day you close, the rents get assigned to you. You walk away with cash. Same thing here. So is there negative cash flow? Absolutely not, because you bought a property that already is producing cash. Next, well, if you got cash coming in, do you have a lot of stress? Not so much. You got less stress, more fun, and you can leverage your time, energy, and effort because the business that you're buying already has systems in place and probably staff in place as well. So you don't have to be the person that builds a website. You don't have to be the person that does the AdWords campaign. You don't have to be the person that makes the graphics, writes the videos, or does the blog posts because the business has done it without you already. So you don't have to dive in on anything other than your terms. Bottom line, you now have a saleable asset from the day you bought it. From the day you bought it, you have, a, you have a cash flow asset you can resell. And frankly, if you do a little bit of rehabbing like you would do with a house, you can sell it for more than you bought it for. In fact, even though we're not going to talk about, about capital appreciation as you would do with real estate, the fact is that the market for online businesses is growing to such a degree that at the, at the moment, it's getting more and more exciting moving forward. And Eric will tell you a little bit more about this history, but he sees over the next few years that you'll be able to sell an online business for the same kind of multiples as you would buy a physical business right now. So it's a pretty exciting time, isn't there's it? One other, yeah, it's a really exciting time. There's one other little thing here, and that is that there's, a, there's an uncertainty with new business. You get into it, you have an idea, you think, wow, this is going to do really well. You pump a bunch of money in. You push, and but you never really know until it actually happens whether or not it's going to be successful. Yeah. Um, whereas with Intervesting, we know it's a successful business because that's all we buy is successful businesses. Yeah. If you think about it, and we'll compare it to real estate in a bit, but you think about it that way, you know it because you verified all the income. You know what you got, and and the key is to do it right. It's not just go out and and, and buy a website. It's it's uh, involves a, a number of different strategies to make sure you're doing it the right way. So. Whoops, so, so let's go ahead to and move on here. The numbers are pretty exciting. In fact, think about it this way. Let's say you buy a digital business for $25,000. Okay, some people think we're just going to buy a website. You're not buying a website. The website comes with the business. It's an asset of the business. You're buying a business that cash flows. Now, we have a standard at Intervestor. We want to be sure that, that that thing actually makes money. So we require that that business, when we, when we evaluate it, has a cash flow of anywhere from 30 to 50 percent. In this case, we're looking at, at a business that's making about thousand dollars a month or 12.5 a year. That's a 50 percent rate of return. How this is not an unrealistic number. No, way. it's not. You're going to see some of it when you when you when you get involved with us. You're going to see exactly how yes, that works. These are the average numbers. Yes, yeah, pretty great. Well, yeah, some of them are totally crazy. I mean, we got people that have that have, that have got 100 percent rates of return. Does this kind of does this does this excite you? Just pop in the chat. Is this the kind of thing you want to be doing? Because I'm going to give you some pretty exciting stuff coming up. Okay, awesome. So let's keep going here. 
Now, the key to me is leverage. Remember, we're looking at a 50% rate of return. And frankly, some of you guys don't have a liquid 25 grand to just pop down on, on this deal, right? So how do we leverage that? Let's just take the easiest way. So we got a cash of $1,000 a month coming in. Let's say that you use your credit card and you just charge 25,000 bucks, okay? Or hell, you can even finance it with PayPal, you know? Um, but you just finance it and with a credit card. At, I think I computed this as at a 14.9% interest rate. Um, I went online and there's a way to compute credit card payments, the payments 563 a month, using your credit card to buy this, which means that you got a positive cash flow monthly of $477 or get this, nearly $6,000 a year coming in with how much of your cash involved? Zero. Zero. That's really an infinite rate of return. I cannot compute the ROI on that. Now, that's the beauty of intervesting because bottom line, you guys, is if you when you learn to intervest, when you learn to do this, figure you're going to have anywhere from 30 to 60 days to do your first deal. And I'm just I'm just playing with those numbers. Is that a fair, fair amount of time there? Yeah. Okay. So you're 30, 60 days. So now we go from we go from zero to six thousand dollars a year within 30 to 60 days while your friends that have been in the internet marketing facebook groups and so on and so forth are still trying to get a little bit of traffic and figure out why their their stuff's not working but now you've got a you've got a, a twenty five thousand dollar business that's making you nearly 500 bucks a month consistently and by the way you got zero cash involved this is what excites me yeah that's about the most expensive way you could finance I know. Oh, well, and, and, and get this. I had a meeting yesterday. I haven't even finished telling you about this, Eric, mm -hmm. but we've got a, a financing arm for Americans. Unfortunately, for you guys in Oz, I haven't. Well, actually, it's not true. I got somebody in Oz that I haven't talked with them yet, but we've got financing in Australia, too. They're going to get hooked up with for you guys. So to actually buy some of these sites, you'll be able to leverage that with some business oriented financing, which is pretty cool. I've got the U.S. part sorted out. Now I've got to get with my guy in Melbourne and get the Australian side squirted out for my, my guys in Australia. For the rest of you around the world, we're going to do it step by step. So with that said, let's just dive in and ask, Eric, what is intervesting? Well, intervesting is the art of finding, evaluating, and buying existing high-profit website businesses. So we, uh, and it doesn't necessarily always have to be a website. It could be a mobile app. It could be uh, software as a service. It could be any number of things. Um, but essentially what we're doing is we're, we're buying businesses that are based predominantly in the digital sphere. Um, so we, having said that, um, let's just push on because what I'd like to do is to, to demonstrate to you just how easy this is. Um, I don't know if all of you would know this site, but there's a site out there called Flipper.com. Flipper is a uh, is a network, something along the lines of eBay, that focuses entirely upon uh, website businesses, mobile app businesses, and uh, domains, re existing pre-registered domains that have weight and history. Um, so what we do with Flipper is we simply go to, uh, at the top there, we go for the Established Sites tab. We click on that, and we basically look for the most active sites. Um, and when we do that, we'll, we'll pull up a site, and there'll be a listing that looks something like this. Uh, and this site, for instance, is one that actually one of our students bought recently. Um, now, you can see here there's a price of $23,670. This is a, a bid price. And um, so this is basically, at the time I took the shot, this is how much was being bid on the property at that time. Now, if you look down a little bit further, you'll see the monthly revenue on this is $4,680. That's a really sizable sum of money on a monthly income on a property that's sitting at 23,600. Yeah, that's a pretty significant rate of return. We're going to come back to that because this this did sell and I'll give you all the details, but let's just look at um, what that looks like in the next slide. So at a glance, we're looking at a site that's a year old. Um, it's got 51,000 unique visitors a month. Now, I, I'm guessing, I, I'm not sure exactly what your knowledge is, but a site with 51,000 unique visitors coming to it a month is, is a reasonable amount of traffic. It's it's quite good. And, and the more traffic there is, the more stable the income is. So we look for 
sites that have good traffic and you'll see also there's a couple of other things in here look at this general gro growth trend in the traffic and look at the general growth trend in the financials um, and this thing is as we stated before 4645 now there's a slight variation there I think it's just rounding up with that first slide so um, so you know at a glance this is a, a good looking site e everything looks the way it should and so um, let's just go over those numbers. Yeah, and, and, and Debbie, we're going, get, we're going to get to verifying monthly income. You're going to, you're going to see exactly how we do it because just because they say it's, it's that doesn't necessarily mean it's that. So we're going, to, we're going to get to due diligence in just a little bit. So sit, sit tight. So let's look at the numbers on this. Okay, so um, I can tell you because I know this, uh, that, that that site sold for $28,000 um, with a monthly net income of four six four five. Uh, and so that's an annual net return of 55,000 in that particular business. Um, it was bought on a 200% return. <laughs> yeah. Now, yeah. <laughs> when the site was taken over, it dropped a little bit, but but it's still running above 100%. So I'm not sure exactly. I, I can't, I'm sorry, but I haven't got the exact details because I haven't looked at it for a while. Um, so yeah, these are sorts of, th this is, more of a, a high risk, a high yield o o opportunity. We're generally going to look for sites that are around 30 to 50 percent, but they're out there and they're being bought and they're being offered right now. And if you jump on Flipper, which probably most of you have already, um, and go to that established section and the most active or the editor's choice, you'll see there the site, the sorts of deals that are going. It's um, really fun. I mean, we, we did this last night at dinner and I, I, brought the, I brought the computer to dinner and, we, and as we were going through the slides and I said, let's go to Flippa, let's go look at buying something tonight. Because I was feeling like, I, should, I, want, I felt like I wanted to buy something. <laughs> so it's almost like going to Amazon, let's go buy a book. Um, yeah. And so we found some sites and, and you will see in, in the numbers um, how it trends out and, and where the opportunities are. It's well, pretty, actually one of the ones <laughs> we found last night, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start negotiating. Oh yeah, it's a, today. It's, it's a good deal. It's yeah, a, it's yeah. a, it looks like a good, let's rephrase that. It looks like a good deal. So yeah. let's take a look at the buying system because that's exactly what you're going to be doing too once you get involved with doing this. So what is the buying system? So the buying system is essentially what we just went over, um, but I'm going to recap on it. It's we, we go to Flipper and we look for the most active sites. We check the revenue, we check the traffic, we check the age, and we put that site, if it all ticks off, we put that site in a list of sites that we then, um, we then basically go back into Flipper and do the same thing again. And we compile a handful of them, generally I say 10, and then pick the best of the 10, and then we go on to the next stage. Because it, cause it's it's almost like getting, getting um, um, what's a brighter, what, what uh, um, Bright, shine or ob, bright, bright, shiny object syndrome. It's like here's one, it's great, and then you go, you go start working on that, and then you go another one, that's great, and you get distracted. So better if you compile a list of say the top ten today that appeal to you, and then weight them as to, because you're only going to do one at a time, right? You're gonna, especially for the first one, you're going to do one. So pick the, you know, once you lay out this one's great, this one's not great, or this one's not as great, <laughs> level them out, and and then come down to the to the top three because. Even though you may have the top one that you think is the best, you, it may be that since they're for bid, that you don't win the bid or, or that it, it goes higher than what you want, right? So when you prioritize, you're in a much better place to be in charge and you take away a lot of the emotion from it. So you're making a conscious decision, which is what we're looking for you to do, right? So that's, that's the cool way of doing it. Now, there's some interesting t statistics because we used an example of, of this one was, that was $28,000 at sale price. I used a $25,000 one. We have a property that we're working on right now that, uh, that we have, have under a letter of intent. Forget a lot of this, you guys, $2.6 million. Uh, and that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother game. But and it's, it's making $1.276 million net. Year. Yeah, it's a, it's a it's a great deal. We're actually talking to institutional investors about doing that one because we actually have a fund that invests institutionally buying giant businesses, which you can play with too. So uh, there's this is a big deal. This isn't just buying little baby websites. Although when you look at the stats, the average sale price of a website on Flippa, and this is I guess last year's number, is about twelve hundred dollars. So you can buy a site for you know twelve hundred bucks. You can buy a site for five hundred dollars. The thing mm -hmm. is though that if you ask Eric, as I have asked Eric, mm -hmm. why would you buy a site for twelve hundred? You'd say, um, well, the best thing about it is that it, it, it teaches you how to do this. Um, and so 
you, you can jump in for a relatively low level of money. I mean, if you compare it to real estate, your, your entry price is significantly higher than this. And you can, at this low price point, it literally can be a few hundred bucks. You can learn the whole process from go to woe. Um, with very, very little risk. Wait a minute. Let us go to, uh, I'm, I'm American. From the start to the end. Thank you. <laughs> you said that the other night. I was like, what? Uh, but here's the thing that Eric said to me. Uh, he, Eric said, why would you put the time, energy, and effort to buying one for 1200 when it's the exact same due diligence, the exact same, exact same process that we just showed you on the slide before, uh, and, the, and, then, and then some, to buy a site for 10000 or 25000 that's going to give you a higher rate of return? Or maybe not so much a higher rate of return, but certainly a higher rate of return for your time, energy, and effort. Yeah. So, so while I want I want you to know that you can get it at any level that you want, um, and that's the key to this thing, right? So, but let's move on. Um, so, and and the key is you have available funding, Debbie. Sure, if you got 1,200 cash, you want to use your own cash, you can. Um, I'm a big person on leverage. I'd rather I'd rather, frankly, if you have credit available to you, use your credit because the cost of your credit, even if it's like 15%. If your yield is 30 plus, and frankly, we don't want you making anything less than that, you're still at an infinite rate of return. You know, so I, I would absolutely want you to look at leveraging that. Think about yourself as an investor right now, not as a quote internet marketer, but think about yourself as an investor because what you're doing is, is buying cash flow. Actually, think about yourself as an investor. Yeah, I'm sorry. Think of yourself as an investor, right? Now, Debbie's saying, what do you do with the sites? Do you reflip them? Well, oh, well, there we go. So, no, actually, we, we, you, of course you can. You can do anything you want with anything, pretty much. Um, but the idea is to build cash flow, to build traffic, right? So, as as an internet marketer, if this is what the area of life that you're into, um, buying existing websites that already have traffic, there are there's not just the money you can earn from that that uh, website, but there's also all the different things that you can do with the traffic. Now, you saw before that Techie Passion site, that's a tech blog, with 51,000 unique visitors going to it a month. Now, think about if you were launching some sort of any kind of strategy, any kind of business, anything, if you just run a couple of ads in your own website that's getting 50,000 people to it a month, um, you're going to get some spillover traffic, quite a lot actually. Yeah. Particularly if you pepper that your other businesses right through the site, you can use it as a as a great way to leverage the beginning of new startups. We we looked at one last night at dinner, and we looked at a, at a property. They were asking two thousand dollars for it, and I was like, okay. And we looked at then we looked at the cash flow. It made zero money, but it had I think it was was it twenty nine thousand or thirty four thousand. I, I wrote an email about this. Some of you saw the email already that I sent out earlier today. It had like twenty or thirty thousand. Active, active users, customers. 37,000. Was it 37? List of 30, yeah, 7, so he remembers 000. the numbers. Yeah. So to buy, it'll go for more than 2,000, but it makes no money. It's not going to cash flow. What you're buying is the list. Is the list. And two grand for nearly 40,000 active people, that's a really good price. Yeah, that's a list of buying. Yeah, and, and, and they're now they're yours. But, <laughs> but back to the thing, do you flip it? You can, but our strategy, and this is why, why Eric and I are working together, it's so consistent with my strategy for you as a totalpreneur. If you want to be a totalpreneur, then hang out at the beach, know there's money coming in, do your life, travel, have fun, be with your kids, and don't worry about all the details of being in the flipping business. Be in the cash flow business. If this thing's making money, hold it for the rental income, if you will. You know, Hold it for the cash flow. If you want to sell it in the future, you can for sure, but then you got to replace it. You got cash, you got a capital gain, you got a profit that's taxable, right? Let the thing roll. And if you're making you know, an infinite return, why would you screw around with it? So I'm, we're going to suggest that you keep it, but we're still going to run the business and look at enhancing the business um, so you can make it do even better. And we, had a, we did an interview together. We recorded the other day um, at, uh, at the beach um, that, that will get posted soon. And Eric and I talked about it. Eric said, you know, you don't even have to touch the website. If it's already making money, you don't have to do anything with it. You can just keep buying more of them and let them produce. I'm going to preempt uh, the next question because I'm sure it's about to come. Um, and it's probably the most common question that I get. Um, and here we are saying, look, buy it and hold on to it. And it really is the strategy. Why do, why do these people sell these websites? Yeah, and I can, tell you, um, I can tell you the, the main reason is because they're online entrepreneurs. They're, they're sort of a new age of entrepreneur who 
are far more interested in the, their projects than in the past projects. And so what happens is, and, and they're always looking to do the next Facebook or the next eBay or the next LinkedIn or something like that. And they'll start these businesses and they'll they'll do pretty well with them. You know, I mean, hey, 50, 100% return. And for them, it's probably more um, is, is a great result. But it's not the result that it's not the 10 million percent result that they're aiming for. Or not their passion. And uh, well, at some point it was their passion, but they generally point. moved on somewhere. Yeah. Um, and so what I find is that more than 90 percent of the sellers uh, are people who are online entrepreneurs. They're project based. They they set the site up. It does well, but they're not the kind of people that like to run a business. Yeah. You know, they're the kind of people that like to create a business. They're, 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 they're starters. They're, yeah, they're starters, essentially. They're starters. So they're, they're, that's their focus. And so after a while, they lose their interest in it. And sometimes you find they'll even run down a little bit, which is a great advantage for us. Um, and, and they put it on the market to sell it because they're funding their next project. So essentially what's going on is uh, well Ken you can take over from here. okay well I, I wanted to, I wanted to get to the next to the next number because there's some pretty amazing numbers and what does this number represent Eric? Um, that's the number of websites that change hands or URLs actually that change hands most of which are websites every day every that's, single that, day that's nearly 300,000 a day you guys and I mean and the number of sites that are being created and marketed and set up so the bottom line if you're thinking about about any potential scarcity in this in this world Think again, because you've got websites covering every possible scenario, um, and I mean, it's just like buying any any other business. Why is the guy selling his dry cleaning shop around the corner? Why is uh, you know why is the person selling his his or her consulting company? You know, I mean, you name it, things are for sale, and there's so much available. We just gave you one website. We'll show you some more in a little bit. But let's compare this to real estate for a second, because I use a lot of real estate uh, metaphors simply because I've been a real estate investor for years. Real estate has risk. Now, I, you know, I, <laughs> everything has risk for sure, but there's a different element of risk in real estate. Uh, I used to own a lot of rental property in Philadelphia and back in the States. And I'll never forget come one winter time, I got a phone call um, from uh, from someone saying, well, we, uh, we, we, and I forget who it was that called me, but I was a property management company, said, yeah, we have a problem. Someone slipped and fell in front of your building and now you're being sued for all the, you know, for the, for the, you know, tens of thousands of hours of, of medical on that. Now I have insurance on the property, but that's still another nuisance. Um, and uh, it turned out it was, it was fraudulent, which of course that never happens, right? But the point is that there's risk and there's, 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 there's craziness that goes along with it. Additionally, there's also risk that goes with regulation. Um, I, I got to tell you that being a landlord, for example, this is many years ago in Philadelphia, it was almost like I didn't own the property. The tenant had more, more rights than I did. Um, and the regulation of zoning and this and that and you know it's it's it may be your property but you still have to deal with other people calling the shots on what you can and cannot do with your own property next there's management issues and and the management of how do you manage that property you've got to manage the leaky roof the running toilet you've got to manage the higher the high taxes you've got to manage all that stuff and the surprise where where the air conditioner in Phoenix breaks just after the warranty is over and that's a three thousand dollar repairable item how would I know about that because it happened to me okay and you can't tell someone who just moved into the house which happened to me so oh, just go to you know just bear, bear with it till I get the money to put that air conditioner and no they're there they you, you owe them that so you got a problem there's no guarantee of appreciation. Now, that's what got me in trouble. I lost millions of dollars a few years ago um, because real estate was not the same guarantee of appreciation that it used to be. The market's changed. So there are no guarantees. And some of you are out there crying right now, I'm sure. Okay. Um, so number next on that, of course, is the ROI. Because there's no guarantees, how do you know what your rate of return really is going to be? I mean, I, we lost we we lost property value. We ended up having loans that were more than the property was worth. So there's no guaranteed ROI walking in. Now, yeah, you can go buy a cash flow property with 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 positive cash flow rents if you buy apartment buildings or office buildings or whatever else. Uh, but then you've got the question of vacancy and so on, and again the surprises. So I still love real estate, but I like this better. Because to me, there is significantly less risk. There's less people involved in this. 
you think about it. I'm not housing a family where, uh, you know, where someone can, you know, can be a problem. I don't have to worry about that right now. I don't have to worry about the guy that can't pay his rent because he lost his job, for example. And as sensitive as I am to that situation, my bank doesn't care. They still want to get paid. So real estate, different ballgame. And, and when you start thinking about what you can do on the web, the beauty of being on the web is this. You know, you can do business from anywhere on your own terms. Um, I mean, when I go and I play squash, for example, um, I bring my iPhone with me and I check numbers as I'm, as I'm trying to breathe after I'm getting my butt kicked playing squash in, in, you know, here. Right now, the stats that, that, that we're aware of is that 40% of the world is online, which means that 60%, and again, these are round numbers, 60% isn't there yet, which means you've got a giant market to tap. Now, you guys speak English. OK, clearly, because you're, you're listening to Eric and I. But there are countries and there are people that don't speak English that are another market that can completely be tapped because it's available. So not just are you looking at the potential today, which is only 40 percent of the market, but you got to understand that market's going to grow by what is that? 150 more percent or 200 percent. I can. It's just it's good. Actually, it was just this year that Southeast Asia completely eclipsed the U.S. in e-commerce. And this is the first time yeah. uh, the U.S. has been way ahead for many years. And now it's actually second in the market. And it looks like it's going to be third. Not two it's, it's, you know, you think about the density that we have here in Asia. So you know, it, it, it's gigantic. And the, the beautiful thing, of course, is that wherever you live, whether you live in the U.S. or Australia or the U.K. or South Africa or wherever, we have people from all over the world here with us today. You can do business anywhere. It doesn't matter. And, and frankly, the, the property that you're going to buy is going to have customers that are from around the world. Now, you know, think about this. If you've got a piece of property in, in Ohio in the U.S., you can't move that property. You know, you, it's, it's there in Ohio. If the, if the Ohio economy crashes, you got a problem. If you have a web-based business, um, you, you, you cross all borders. It's beautiful. So the nice thing is that you've got the ability right now to watch your market grow because it's going to grow automatically. That piece will grow. I'd like to think about it this way. Uh, your child is going to grow. Inherently, we all grow, right? And th this this web business that you're buying, this digital business you're buying, is going to, is part already of a universe that does have growth when you buy it right. We looked at a site yesterday that I thought was kind of cute, and uh, and I, I liked I liked the business because I just liked what what they did. However, we took a look at the trending on it, and it was a fad, so not a growing area. The, the you know web web availability is growing up, but you want to make sure that you're on the right side of the trend. It's actually a really important point, Ken, and I'll just pipe in here. Think about buying a house and you looking in a city, for instance, and you're looking at a particular suburb and you know what? That suburb happens to be growing. Um, it's, it's on the upward trend because it's a new emerging area in the city. But you don't actually, generally, it's very difficult to judge whether or not uh, a particular area in a particular city is actually growing or not growing. And even if it's been doing it statistically in the past, um, the, the numbers are so difficult and ethereal to work with, you know, that the, the, a three bedroom apartment just across the road sold for this and da, 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 da. But with the internet, there, there's, there are statistics and, and so many numbers that can be e so easily accessed that you have a really clear picture of where businesses are going much, much clearer than you do with real estate. Actually. Yeah, it, it, yeah, and when you do the due diligence, we're going to get to that in a second, you'll see just, just how easy that can be. But it's also, you know, as I say, it's easy. It's something that you've got to make sure you do, and, and you'll learn the tools and how to do it so you can rest easy. So here's the thing. You know, if you're thinking about buying a business, and this is really, this is about buying buying businesses. The thing is that, that, that the traditional businesses aren't surviving as they used to. I mean, it, we're just seeing store closings all over because – we're becoming more online oriented now. So there's good news, bad news. You know, would you buy a Blockbuster store? Not so much. And Blockbuster had all the opportunity in the world to go digital and they blew it, which really bugged me because I like the Blockbuster brand. I like what they I like what they did, but they completely got beat up by by uh, by Netflix, you know, and that's and that's the challenge. Right. So. So there you go. Um, and anyway, so let's let's continue to press on. I want to share with you the the the, the um, 
well, I'll see if we can play this video for you. This is um, this is Bernie, and Bernie uh, retired five years early. Uh, but let me see if I can get this video to play for you. And, and so, give me a second here. I'm gonna hit the, hit the play button. I'll see if we can. Oh, Eric, I was just wanting to say thank you from the bottom of my heart for you producing your internet Intervestor program. It is by far the best internet program I've ever come across, and I'm happy to report that I've already bought two websites this week that are returning 70% plus return on my investment. So I'm happily looking forward to retiring in Costa Rica sooner rather than later. Thanks heaps, I really appreciate it. Now, hopefully you got to hear that, uh, but, but, but the point is that she's now got, within the first six weeks of buying her site, nearly $6,000 of monthly income, yielding her nearly 100% on her money. Uh, retired five years early, she's now en route uh, to Costa Rica, which is not a bad place to retire to, having lived there myself for six months. So that's the, the beauty. Of, and I'll tell you what, you know, as as we look and as I as I spend some time with you guys today, um, you know, I grilled Eric a lot before we, we looked at how we could we could do business together and how uh, how we would would interface our totalpreneur brand along with with um, uh, with Intervestor. And I said, Eric, you know, what's the success rate of your people? You know, what's going on? Because generally, you know, you know this. Most people that that go to any kind of training do nothing. You know, there's what we when we talk about the disclosure of what is your success rate. You know, the success rate usually for people is zero. You know, I mean, you know, you get you get a very small percentage that actually take action. So, you know, I think Eric, you told me it's, it's about two percent industry wide. Actually, the industry is it's the industry stat for this is one point seven percent. It's pretty bad, right? But the beautiful thing is that when you get involved with Intervestor, the history that we've got at Intervestor is 40% of the people that are in our inner circle have actually they've gone ahead, taken action, bought one or more websites that are profitable. Yeah. That's the percentage. Yeah. Le and let's define that. Bought one or more websites that are profitable. That's pretty significant. So I thought I would send, give you a celebration slide. Now, Lynn, 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 we'll get to, to your question about the about the uh, the site on Flippa that you're looking at. You, you can look at sites from all over the world. You can buy a site based in the U.S. Doesn't matter. There's no issue there. You want to be able to have the opportunity to buy a site anywhere. Thinking about the marketplace, the U.S. is the biggest market in the world, right? Well, soon to be not the biggest market in the world when you think about what's happening here in Asia. But point is, I'll buy a site in in uh, in Australia. I'll buy a, buy a site in Thailand. I'll buy a site in the U.S. or even in the U.K. I don't care if it's making money. I'm thrilled with it. There are there are certain types of sites that are easier to run if you actually if they're based in the majority of the traffic or for instance the suppliers yeah. are in the same country that you're in. So for things like e-commerce stores, it's much it's easier to work with suppliers that are in your own country, but it's not impossible. And we have we have and and have a bunch of members that have. <clears throat> e-commerce sites that are based in other countries. And the, well, the thing about it's it is a little bit of juggling. Well, the thing is that they're, they're already doing business, so it doesn't yeah. really matter. You're the owner. You're yeah. not. You're not packing boxes of vitamins. No. The system's yeah. already in, the system's already in place, so it doesn't matter <clears throat> about how that business is done. It's already business. It's already being. It's already a business. But let's talk about the best niches out there, because this is this is kind of exciting. Uh, you know, people ask where should I invest, and it's it's or what kind of business should I run. It's no different than what you already know, but slightly different when you think about what the opportunities are. Now, remember, when we talk about niches, we're not spending time right now talking about finding your passion. I have a passion for, for paying the mortgage. I don't know about you. I have a passion for eating well and for traveling, and I have a passion for enjoying my life, and I have a passion for challenge and finding something that I can, that I can actually manipulate and be proud of. So, for example, on a personal level, Gaming is one of the one of the top four niches that we'll recommend to you. Okay, now I am not a gamer. I, that's that's not who I am. But would I own a gaming site? Well, if it cash flows, I might. Now it doesn't fit my market. I mean, I'm looking to 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 work with with entrepreneurs, so gaming wouldn't work for me so much. But it might totally work for you. And if you love it, even better. But there's a truckload of money there. There's nothing wrong with following your passions. In fact, I do recommend it to people because. If you buy a site that's centered around the things that you're interested in, then you'll absolutely enjoy running that site. Now, we'll get into the running part later because actually you don't really do a lot of running of your site, but um, you, you find other people to help you with all of that sort of thing. But really, it's it's the, the more interested the topics 
the more interested you are in the topics around the website, the better it's going to be for you because you won't lose your interest in it as quickly. Sure. Well, here's the other thing too. Debbie says my son does gaming. There you go. I'm developing a new site. Perfect. Let him buy let him buy some profitable gaming sites. But here's the other way to look at it. Like I said, I'm not into gaming at all, but I am into building businesses. So where if I if I bought a gaming site, what would excite me about it would be to take it from earning X dollars a month to earning X plus what I what enhancements I made. I the, took over a Romanian gaming site that had a million visitors going to it a month, um, and we bought it for th just under three thousand um, dollars. I then spent seventy bucks converting it over to English because we found that twenty six percent of the traffic. So that's 260,000 people a month mm. were actually out of the States, but I'd probably uh, of Romanian descent. Ah, yeah. um, and, uh, and then what we did was we, uh, I'd put a couple of ad panels into the site um, and I put together a technology store, an e-commerce store, and we just advertised. That was the only place we advertised. It was on that gaming site. And that business made about six, 7,000 bucks a month. Isn't that great? The total investment was under five thousand dollars. That's a hundred. No, that's not even. That's, that's just a thousand. Percent you can't return. count the return. And that's gigantic. So, don't get. You know, one of the things to talk about in real estate is is that you shouldn't get emotionally involved. Don't get emotionally involved. You're you're actually investing in doing business here. Here's the next one. And this, is, Debbie, you're gonna love. You're gonna love this. What what am I looking at here? You no, know, not not podiatry. We're talking about weight loss and fitness and lifestyle effectively, but the health side of things, right? So health and weight loss, gigantic fitness, diet. I mean, you can go on forever with this. That is a multi-billion dollar business. Think about this. You know, you've, you've all of you have heard of, of, of um, the four hour work week. Well, how do you think Tim Ferriss got started? It was in the vitamin business. So it, it's still there, babe, and you can private label everything. Then there's the dating, then there's the dating business. Relationships. Relationships are huge. Giant, huge, no question. Okay? So uh, so there you 95 go. Ninety-five percent of people between the ages of eighteen and thirty-four in New York first meet online and a, at a dating site. Wow. And and by the way, just as an FYI, the demographics <laughs> of that are crazy. My mom is now she eighty or eighty one. I lost track. I think she's she I think she's eighty one now. Um and uh, my mom still goes online date and dates. Mm -hmm. She still goes online and does online dating. So um, that's my mom, you know, crazy lady. <clears throat> so Debbie says, that's our, not dating, but uh, fitness, that's our niche. The traffic alone will be wonderful. Yeah. The beauty, see, here's the other thing. Take your existing business. So take what you're doing right now. And if you're like most people out there, you're still struggling, you're not making the kind of money you want to make, you, you're frustrated, you buy a few sites that have the traffic coming in already, and how is that going to feed what you're currently wanting to do? So not only are you buying business and buying cash flow, and yes, you could be buying traffic as well as part of what you're, what you're acquiring, but now what you've been struggling with now has a much better chance of success because you added to it, you made it bigger. That's how a small company like the David company can buy the Goliath business and become eminently successful. That's why a smaller company bought AT&T. And in, in a small, one of the small uh, Bell companies in Texas, SBC, bought AT&T and is now AT&T. The smaller company bought the bigger company. So you can completely do that. Next is… Buying for traffic is actually one of our key strategies. Yeah. If, I mean, you're, if you have an existing business or you're doing any kind of business that needs people, and let's face it, all businesses do… Um, then uh, the, you know a great way to expand your business is to actually buy existing traffic sites. Yeah, so not such as cash flow, it's traffic which then takes your business and puts it in the next place. Think about, for example, um, how bigger companies are buying others because they're buying customers. Apple bought Beats because they wanted that product, they wanted the technology. Disney bought Pixar. That's the kind of thing you're able to do. This is not so much a picture of celebrating cash. It's 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 one of the tackier pictures I could find about the making money online or entrepreneurship or business building niche, which is one of our top four. Giant sums of money there. Giant sums of money there. So it's fan, it's really fantastic. Yeah, Oscar says this is awesome. <laughs> I'm in. He says. So are you are you guys getting this? I mean, this is just absolutely great, right? Now I gave um, you the four. I gave you the four niches. What? Yeah, a little while back, I started looking. I, I wanted to try and find a niche that actually wasn't working or that yeah. wouldn't work, mm. and it actually turned out to be a really difficult thing to do. Mm. 
Um, and it took me uh, maybe an hour mm. to find something <laughs> that I could actually say, don't go into this niche. And what we came up with was um, was the spray on hair niche. And, and I can't even remember this thing. I think it was the personal privacy computer viewing <laughs> system or something like that. And yeah, so I, if you actually come across sites selling either of these two products, I would probably avoid them. Yeah. We want you. We want you to avoid trends. Basically, you want. I mean, I, I want you to buy something that has longevity. So when you look at that, for example, we looked at the site yesterday, um, which was it, it sold. Um, you know the the BCom uh, and blah 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 uh, logos. Well, it does those online. And that's we looked at at the trending of it, and we did some of the due diligence because we're going to get to due diligence right right now. And the point is that this thing, we just kept seeing the traffic dropping, 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 and then we went to Google Trends, and uh, with with that, we discovered very simply that it was going to go out of business soon. I mean, just following the current trends because it was a fad, the interest disappeared. Mind you, you know, even with a site like that, you can ride out the the downflow. Yeah, you know, and you can go to you can go to the seller and say, "Hey, look, great, we're really interested, but there's a massive downward trend here, not just in your website traffic, but it's reflective of the overall niche." And so we we just don't see the value in the price that you're asking for it, and this is what we're prepared to pay. Um, <clears throat> and so you can, you know, when you're buying something that's earning 50% or 100% per annum. Um, and in this case, I would be going something more along the lines of looking at 150% return. Yep. Uh, then you know you can make your money out in the first year, and yeah, you ride the, you ride the roller coaster down the hill. But by the time you get to the bottom, um, you maybe made five, six hundred percent, seven hundred, a thousand percent return, and really not had to do much. Yeah, and, and you just and you just know going in that you're not you're not doing a, a business building piece. You're, you're you're riding it out, so you don't don't get disappointed. As you watch it, but that said, the people that are coming to that site are still traffic and people that you can you can mm -hmm. cross sell into what you're currently doing anyway. So who cares? Yeah. So again, it, that's why that's why we're talking strategy here. This is a bigger game than perhaps you've thought of. Next, we're going to look at at recent changes. Actually, am I am I stealing your thunder on this? No, you can by all means go ahead. Okay. I mean, we're going to go into detail, so maybe just list the things out and then I'll go through the details. Yeah, and we and we want to be mindful of your time because we're running a little bit a little bit behind on on um, on our our schedule here because we did add a bunch of this to this session. So let me just try and and, and speed it along. So we're going to look at recent changes because what you what you're concerned with on the website is that you want co consistency and continuity. Okay, the ownership. Who owns this thing? You know, um, is the income real? Is the income real? And is the content real? Has it been plagiarized, or is it real content that you actually own? Last thing you want to do is, is walk into a bunch of problems. Okay, so let's just dive in. So we'll just run through this. Um, checking the traffic is generally very simple um, because the, most of the websites on Flipper will list um, whether or not the traffic is verified. And if you see this little thing, this little symbol verified next to the traffic, you know that it's legitimate traffic. So uh, can we move on the slide there? Yep, sorry. So, <clears throat> and, and if you look at this particular site, uh, and I believe this was the Techie Passion ones, I'm not sure, maybe I've got it wrong. Uh, I can't I can't tell. see. I can't Anyhow, tell. I mean, if you look at this, Look at that traffic pattern. It's it's pretty steady. Yes, there's peaks, there's little troughs here and there, but generally speaking, it's ve it's fairly steady. Um, and that's the sort of thing that we like to look for. Preferably, growing is even better. Um, and you'll notice here, for instance, that there are um, 96,000 unique viewers and about 128 pages. So they're they're looking at 1.4 pages or 1.3 pages. Um, each. Um, so, you know, this is the kind of thing that you want to look for. So, um, the other thing that, <clears throat> excuse me, the other thing that we want to look at is the Wayback Machine. Probably some of you are familiar with this, maybe you're not. Um, it's archive.org, and what it basically shows us is what the site used to look like at various points in, in the past. And the reason we look at this is we want to have. Um, a clear indication that the site has been what it is now for some time. But the longer, the better, in fact. Um, and there are instances where this is not the case. You find people, I, I don't know how many of you are familiar with the strategy, but you can buy age domains and repurpose them 
age domains that have existing traffic or existing backlinks and things like that, repurpose them into new sites. Um, now, that, always, that isn't always a bad thing, but what we want to do is we want to have a look and see what's actually there. So if the thing was, for instance, a porn site in the past or something like that, it, it's almost certainly have, will have been blacklisted across a bunch of networks, and we want to make sure that that's not the, the case with this one. So we pump it into the Wayback Machine, we have a look at it, and, and if it's just sort of generally been the same and you can't see any problems there, then we can go on to the next stage of the due diligence process. The, um, the finding out who the owner is is actually really easy. There's a couple of ways you can do it. Flipper Within Flipper itself, if you look at the seller um, in the listing, the, the seller component of the listing, you'll find that it'll have ownership verified in most instances, if not all. Um, otherwise, you can go to whois.sc or any kind of whois site and just pop the URL in and it'll come up with the owner unless it's been cloaked. And the reason the flipper's done it is that, that, that they get past that cloaking. <clears throat> so to check out the income, the easiest way to do that is to ask the seller for video proof of the actual income. I think that's, so, I think that's pretty cool doing it yeah, that way. So you, you just, and it's really not that tricky. All you do is you jump on a Skype call with them or a Zoom call or whichever system you like to use and just have them log into their back end um, and show you how it's all working and where the, that the money's actually coming in. The reason we do this is because it's so easy to mock up a screenshot and make it look like there's something there, but it's virtually impossible mm -hmm. to mock up a video proof, uh, particularly a live video, mm -hmm. because you're watching them actually log into PayPal or log into Authorized Net or Stripe or whichever system that they're using and they're showing you and often what will happen is if it's a busy business mm. and, and generally they are you'll see orders coming through while you're on the call with them and that's this happened to me just on the last one that we were negotiating during a half hour call I watched seven orders come through nice yeah <laughs> that's so, nice. so you know that that gives you a, a real sense that it's actually a legitimate business so the other thing uh, that we're looking for is we're looking for the content to be unique. Um, one of the telltales of a, of a scam is that they will produce multiple versions of the same site yeah. and then sell each of them. And they, and they do these really tricky little things where they, they swap out, they, they, have, they use PayPal as their system and they swap out the emails. And so it looks like oh. they're getting income to that site because they've just they've, they've got an existing business with other websites feeding it, mm. um, and they just swap the email for a little while, and then they give that as the proof. Now, you can you can get past these things because generally what happens is you find multiple instances of that the website copy in a bunch of different websites, and this is how you discover that. <clears throat> yeah. So and, and within that's... Flipper itself, it has that capacity. To, otherwise, you use um, Copyscape. Um, and there's a couple of other plagiarize, plagiarization sites that you can use, but and and Flipper itself will give you that, um, show you that it's not uh, that it's not that it's unique content. Sorry. Yeah, and, and so you know, so the due diligence part is super super important, but it's a system that's easy to 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 actually do when you know how to do it. Sort of like, um, and by the way, there's companies that will actually do it for you and will help set you up with that. So it's almost like getting a home inspector to look at your house which is kind of important. But think about this, wouldn't it be great uh, to have been at the beginning of Google or Amazon or Twitter or Copy Blog or any of those other things, looking at, at you know, investing in those guys. I mean, wouldn't, you, wouldn't it have been great to own a piece of Google or hell, McDonald's when it first got started, right? The interesting thing is though, that if we were to pine about, gee whiz, and we missed all the capital growth of Twitter, or, or heck, uh, Gary Vaynerchuk's been whining about I missed the first wave of Uber. I feel so stupid. I missed I missed the beginning of Uber. And there's been a lot of conversation about that, right? Well, get a load of this. The, just picking whatever tech bubble you were doing. Okay, LinkedIn was yeah, the return was point um, or oh, 71 cents for every thousand dollars that you invest. Um, and with Amazon, you're looking at about a nine dollar sixty eight return for every thousand. With a um, AOL, it's uh, 44 
dollars and twenty six cents for every thousand you invest. So around about a four percent return on that one, which is kind of what you expect actually. But I don't think it's a brilliant return. But now look at look at the average revenue coming from Flippa, and of course these numbers came from Flippa, eight hundred eighty one dollars versus the fractions of the tech bubble people. So, you know, while you're thinking it's great and sexy to have a piece of Google or whatever, I think it's sexier even to have your own business that's throwing off a, a, a truckload of cash flow that's yours, all yours. And that's the beautiful thing. So, so that's the opportunity that's available to you. I mean, how many of you guys like the way this is going with what you can do here to take your existing business, catapult that in ways of cash flow and traffic and, and so on. You really get to pick the benefit you want to buy. That's the, that's the absolute beauty here. So I'll introduce you, and actually, and you can kind of just tell the story about Lucinda. Um, in fact, why don't you tell her story? Okay. Well, Lucinda um, did exactly what quite a few other people um, do, and that is they jump straight into Flipper and they start looking around. And um, while she was on our uh, webinar, she actually ended up buying her first website. And then over the, I think within a month or two, she'd bought another six or seven websites. So I'm a bit sketchy on the details because she didn't give me exact numbers. Um, then she sent me through this particular, uh, this particular email, telling me how that she, you know she'd bought her first website after watching the the webinar and uh, and before she actually began the course, and then uh, then she was building up a portfolio of sites now. She sent me this email around about two and a, two and a half or th maybe three months after she'd started, and she in this she went on to say that uh, she was targeting uh, a complete return of her investment in the next month. So that's by month four, um, she bought. I think it was around. It was a look. I I'm, I might be mixing up the number of sites with the income, but it was. I think she'd spent about six or seven thousand, and she'd bought six or seven sites. But I, I might have these numbers those, wrong. Those are, nice, those are nice numbers. But essentially, she, you know, she recovered her income, her investment within three months, uh, and the rest is just profit. And actually, she was one of the people that I, I we put we posted our wedding on Facebook the other day, and um, I worked with Lucinda quite a while ago, and she was one of the people that sent me the loveliest. Um, message for our wedding. It was, it was beautiful. That's awesome. So the bottom line is, it, you know, it's all doable. By the way, when you guys stick around to the end, we're going to get you a copy of this uh, of this infographic on the, the eight key steps to investing. So we're not going to have time to go through it right now, but you'll have that with you when you stick around to the very end. So stay with us. Um, so to get started with Flippa, it's very simple. Really simple. You go to Flippa.com. You create your username, your email, your password. You create, create your account button. Oh boy. Okay. Then start playing, start looking for things. And it really gets down to that. So you'll be able to see. Uh, you have to register in order to actually make a bid. Yeah. And, um, and the more you verify your registration and there's, there's a bunch of different things that you can do. You can, you know, give them your number and, and verify your email obviously and other stuff like that. So the more that you do that, add a photo to your profile, um, fill out the actual profile as much as you can because think about it this way the, the sellers are just as nervous as, as the buyers are in in a sense right sellers want to know that whoever's bidding on their their um, website is actually a legitimate buyer right because they don't want to waste their time so the more information that you put into your profile uh, and the more cre the more credibility you give yourself essentially um, and so the 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 better you will be positioned to negotiate a good deal. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 about. I mean, remember, this is all this is this is basically social media in a lot of ways, right? So, and you look at the ratings, even in eBay, for example, if you've ever done anything with eBay or anywhere else, that social proof is what you need. So that's going to be really important, but not hard to do, super easy. Uh, in fact, bottom line is, uh, if you can put an envelope in the mail, you can do this. And this, this, by the way, is is Eric. Where was that taken, by the way? Uh, that's taken at the top of Mount Ogong in Bali. I live in Bali most of the time, actually. So, so yeah. So, you know, bottom line is is something that you can do. And of course, you know, we're going to be there to help you when you when you join our inner circle. You'll be there. We'll be there to help you. So you're going to be able to be in business for yourself, but not by yourself. And a lot of you um, 
have been putting in the chat, you know, how can we get involved? We also have a fund that uh, that you'll be hearing more about moving forward, where we actually working with institutional investors buying big websites where you can you can you can be actually able to say to cocktail party, yeah, I own a 2.6 million dollar website or whatever. You know, kind of neat to be able to have to be an owner of that, you know, shareholder of that. But let's keep going. So get, if I can just recap, I mean, yeah. we've shown you the discovery phase, which is going out and finding websites. We've we've shown you the due diligence phase. Um, which is, you know, making sure that they are what they are, what they claim to be. Um, and then we've shown you the process of actually buying, which is super simple. I mean, there's a lot more that goes into that, and 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 I can I can teach you a, a whole bunch of really cool strategies to to reduce the price. Um, for instance, that Techie Passion site, the the buyer was originally asking for fifty to sixty thousand dollars, and uh, and I helped Bernie buy that, and we we picked it up for twenty eight. <clears throat> but um, so now the next step is actually after you've bought the site, how do you run this site? Like, what, it, I mean, you know, like, I'm actually not a website developer. I'm not a programmer. I'm not a graphic designer. So how do I run a website? And so one of the things I want to tell you is that it's sort of very similar to owning a house. Now, probably a lot of you here own a house, but i Bet my bottom dollar that hardly any of you, if any of you at all, are, web, are, are house builders or plumbers or electricians or roofers or any of those sorts of things. So how can you own a house without actually being a builder? Exactly the same way you own a website without being a website developer. You give a guy a call and you say, hey, I need this done on my website. or And it might be order processing. It might be... Um, it might be some new design work that needs to be done. It might be setting up a sales page for something. It might be adding a product to the website. There's all sorts of things that can be done. Now, the benefit of Intervesta is that you can do this without having to hire local people to do it. And and this is one of the problems when you own a house. You've got to spend, if you're in Australia, it's going to cost you 100 bucks an hour to hire a builder to do any kind of work on your house. Um, as an investor, when you own a website, you can hire somebody in the Philippines who's generally really well qualified to do the work at a fraction of what it would cost you to do it um, in your own country. So. Yeah, and the beauty is that, that you know, you, you've heard of Fiverr and you, you've heard of Odesk. Odesk is now called Upwork. So you can get people to, to do the work you need done, whether they're based in, in the U.S. or the Philippines or India or or you name it, you know, I mean, there, we have people that work with us from all over the world. So that's the beauty of, of again, being in this business. It's, it's, it is, frankly, the complete total printer lifestyle. So, and, and you know, just by the way, if you want to create an, an account on Odesk, uh, sorry, up, up, what's it called again? Up, up, Upwork. Upwork. Yeah, we, we both, been, we've been trying to gradually change slides here. Um, but if you, when you want to create your Upwork, I don't like that name. I like Odesk better. Um, but anyway, you just, just create a free account. It's simple. And then post your ad and for what you're looking for and be clear about your description about what you want and what you need. And within a few hours, you'll start seeing people making bids for, uh, for serving you. So we wanted someone, for example, a few months ago to help us with Infusionsoft. And I had, I've got to say I had at least a dozen or so people that that sent me proposals for what they could do, um, you know. And so whatever you need, whether it's programming, whether it's art, whether it's editing a film or video, or whatever. I mean, these guys can. You've got talent from from A to Z, all the way down the line. It's pretty cool. Um, and I'll, I'll tell you, you know, you you're able then to really run the lifestyle that you want. Whoops. I guess this in there twice. This is uh, this is this is Steve McKinley, since it says it's Steve McKinley. Um, and um, why don't you tell Steve McKinley's story? Because you know this guy. Okay. Well, yeah. And there's a an interesting correction that needs to be made in here. Okay. <laughs> um. So uh, Steve uh, joined uh, us at Investor and actually became a member of our partner program. Um. And what that basically meant was we bought sites together with uh, with with our members. So um. We went out and bought the first site uh, with him, uh, and that was seventy-five thousand. And and in the first month, um, it actually made three thousand two hundred twenty-eight dollars and what is it, fifty-three cents, um, and th which was a great return. And and actually, what Ken's done is he's just he's multiplied that by twelve. But the actual income from the site, um, if from memory, was closer to forty-three thousand for the first year. Um, so. 
So, but this ROI figure here is 51%, and I'm sorry, Ken. Gee, I'm wrong. Because I, I completely, <laughs> I completely forgot to mention it to you earlier that that, that income number was just the first month. Um, yeah. So, um, and and you know, this is these are the sorts of deals that are available, and and really at the 51% return, I you know that's really where we aim for um, every time. In fact, I, I find them to be. The sites that we're getting that kind of return on are generally the most stable, the safest. Um, when you get to higher ROIs, it tends to be a little bit more risky. And and let's face it, we, we don't want risk. We just we want income. We want peace. We want I mean we want to be on that dock and on that boat, enjoying life and having fun. And that's the that's why you know if you want to be a totalpreneur, that's why to me this is the 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 best way to stabilize and accelerate. Uh, your your growth. You know? Now, if I can contextualize this, yeah. because, you know, these are probably astronomical numbers for most people. Most people, if they're going, oh, I want to play it safe, they'll put their money into bonds or something like that and get a 3% yield or a 1% yield. And if they want to get a bit risky, they'll go into the stock market and maybe get a 10 or 15% yield. And that's, you know, super high risk. And so, and here we are as investors talking about, you know, oh, we want a more stable, yeah, stable right, business, right, right. and so we stick to around thirty to fifty percent return. Now, yeah. um, this, these really are the numbers, and and this is one of the things that makes investing so extraordinary, um, is that you know it, it's kind of it's a little bit like the wild west out there. Um, there are uh, there are cowboys trying to sell all sorts of rubbish, and what investor does is it basically helps you to sift through all of that and identify which ones are really worth going after. And, and I go into Flipper almost, almost on a daily basis and I see um, that there are all sorts of people bidding on all sorts of websites that they really shouldn't be bidding on. Yeah, exactly. They really shouldn't be. And if, they, if I had a two-minute chat with them, they would understand why they really shouldn't have placed a bid on that website. But there's not much I can do because I can only help so many people. Yeah. So... Um, there are other opportunities out there. It's not just about Flipper. There's website broker. Um, there is uh, website properties. And then there's also another great service called Empire Flippers. And we actually work with these guys a fair bit. Yeah. And, 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 and by the way, Lynn's asking, do the sites you're buying need to be subscription sites? And the answer to that is no. They can be whatever you want them to be. Subscription sites. Yeah, I mean, I mean, well, the subscription site would be a site that's got a memberships. Right. Yeah. No, we can buy any kind of site. Yeah. I mean, the, the one where, we, well, I was in the middle of negotiating, but the seller's done a, a flipper on me. Um, uh, but that was a site that basically sold gift cards um, to people who only had PayPal accounts or wanted to buy them with PayPal accounts. Now, a lot of gift cards in the States can't be bought with PayPal accounts um, because they just don't accept PayPal. And so this, this person set up a site that acts as a middleman um, and accepts a PayPal payment and then goes and physically orders a gift card and sends it to the to his buyer. Yeah, so it's not, it's not a subscription site. It's a transaction site. Yeah. So, you you know, again, it's any kind of business that serves you. Now, you know, no, if you all know me, you know I want to see recurring income. I love recurring income. Um, but a, a business that, that is transactional based, that <clears throat> that has, has a demand and has a history, you can consider that a cash flow business as well. And guess what? You may want to actually have a, um, you may want to add a, some kind of subscription or membership that would perhaps give them give members a discount or some other some other benefits that on a traditional transaction based business. So think about that. You you can completely buy something and, and enhance it. Remember, you're buying a business <coughs> excuse me a business from somebody that that can be updated and enhanced and improved. Think about rehabbing a property. So, for example, right, if right now, if you're if you're feeling that you're you're you know you're in the rat race and you're running around like a crazy person, and being part of the pack, I got news for you. I mean, the rat race is over. The rats won. <laughs> you know, the rats won. So it's time for us to make some changes, and we're going to invite you guys to dive on in with us. Um, I'll give you one other example, and then uh, a couple of examples, and then we'll invite you to join our inner circle, uh, which is something that I couldn't be more excited about. How many of you guys want to want to hear more about the inner circle? I mean, we'll go ahead and we'll, we'll do that. Um, I want to tell you about Tommy. Tell us Tommy about Tommy. Tommy was one of our earliest members, and um, he lives in Finland. And uh, and actually, if you go to our website, you can see a, a really nice little video that yeah. he put there. Um, <clears throat> but he uh, he was very nervous about buying his first site, 
and uh, and it took him quite a while to get going. But he, when he finally dived in, he he some he mustered up seven hundred and sixty dollars, and he bought himself this little site. Now, um, three weeks later, he sent me this message uh, saying that he'd already turned over seven hundred dollars, um, and in fact, no profit of seven hundred dollars. And uh, and he's had, he's had this site for about two and a half three years now. It's consistently made him um, ten thousand dollars a year since he bought it for seven hundred sixty dollars. Now, I, well, actually, look, I tell I tell a small lie because it hasn't consistently made him. It's consistently made him ten thousand dollars, but it hasn't consistently made him money on a month by month basis because he does need to spend two or three hours a month working on the site and there's been months where he's neglected to do that and the income has dropped a bit well and, and also you're going to find just like any business that has seasonal trends yeah you know you're you, you're going to look and you're going to look at the trend of what you're buying to know that maybe in august you should just close up you know you go, go to the beach well you don't you know, ever need to close well, a website but yeah, yeah it, I, it, the, the it, point yeah the point is there's some months it's not worth putting the effort in yeah. it is very important right now just i want you to don't I want you to think that you can just buy a website and then just Forget about it, and and it's just going to pour money's going to pour in because that doesn't happen, yeah. right? And we've we've actually gone through this scenario a little bit in the past, and it's important once you buy the site that you actually do set up a proper management setup, and that you do run promotions and you continue to promote the site like the seller was promoting it, or even better, which isn't difficult to do in most instances. So. Um, you know, you might buy a site that's making a 50% return, but I will always recommend that you spend 20% of your income from it in promoting that site, continuing to promote that site. So it may end up like a 35% return or, so, we, you know, we always aim for 50 or over because we want to have a good return and we want to continue to grow the site. Yeah, think about it as, as owning a business when you, or sorry, owning a house. You buy a house as an investment, but you still have to mow the lawn. You still have to mm. fertilize it. You know, you're still going to take care of it. Um, so, you know, same kind of thing. You're going to look at your website security, for example, and make sure that that's all taken care of. And you'll have a team that works with you to do that. So you don't have to be concerned with computer viruses or any, you know, any of that kind of madness because that's, that's why you build a team. They're generally, those sorts of things, the technical stuff is generally the least of your problems. Yeah, and because you're buying a site that's already working, it's already earning income, it's got an established business history, mm -hmm. um, and whether or not it's actually been set up well or not doesn't sort of matter, it's already working. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. And, that's, that's and in fact, we'd always look for the sites that actually could have, where everything could have been done better, the design could be a bit cooler, the, the SEO work that they've done could have been better. Because that's they're all just opportunities. Yeah, and the thing is, now that you've got a site that's got that's got history with it, and you've got you've got momentum with it, you know, now you can actually do the things you've been learning about and, and use some of the strategies you've been buying and, and with your trainings. You know, with, with startup businesses with, which have which have lo low traffic and low users and so on, all the split testing stuff in the world isn't going to do you much good because you don't have enough of a, of a universe to get any valid data. But if you've got 25,000 people coming into your site each week or each month or whatever, you've got stuff you can really test and modify and enhance. Pretty exciting. Let's talk about Sean real quick, and then we'll, then we'll give you an invitation to, uh, to the inner circle. Well, Sean's been with the program for quite a while, um, and he's he's one of those people that sort of rolled in and out of the program. He'll come and do some stuff, and then he disappears for a while, and then he comes back. But the last site that he purchased... Um, he purchased it on uh, at fourteen thousand dollars, and actually earned him. It actually earned him four thousand bucks in the first month, and it, and it's but it slowly kind of drifted down to around about fifteen hundred bucks a month, um, and it seems to be pretty steady there. And and he's actually now doing a bit of work on it, and I think it'll jump up again a bit more. But um, if we just base it on that fifteen thousand a month, that's a ROI of one hundred and twenty eight percent. And I think he's he's also putting back around about 20% into the business. So um, his actual ROI is a little bit lower than that. But, you know, on a, on a cash basis, that's what it is. And, yeah, he's um, he's been with us for years now, actually, years. Yeah. And, and so these are the kind of numbers I want you guys to do. And so at this point, let's invite you to come join the inner circle. This is really where, where the, the game changes for um, for you, and I think it's going to really give you a, an opportunity to jumpstart yourself. So the inner circle starts out with five modules, and the first module is is how to find 
I'm going to call them your cherry deals, you know, your best deals. So you learn some of the website basics you need to know, the types of the deals and sites you're going to be looking at. So that way you, you can operate intelligently, obviously. The simple discovery process, which we went into a little bit today. Uh, then look, taking a look at the market segments of and, and how they're growing. Um, and also, by the way, we're going to look at how to define domains and high value potential across multiple networks because that's going to be the key to really multiplying your success. One site by itself, nice. But multiple sites that tie in together, it's, now, it's like now fishing with a net rather than fishing with a fishing pole. Gigantic leverage that we'll be able to do. So you can learn all that just in module one. Then in module two, we'll look at the big picture. What really is what we're, what, what's going on as we evaluate the deal? Uh, front end analysis and then the back end analysis. People forget about the back end, but that's where the big money gets made. Okay, then of course, we're gonna spend some time on due diligence because that's really our verification process that gives you the peace of mind to know what you're getting before you even go in and, and actually buy it. And then as we do that, we'll, we'll, you'll learn actually how to go back to the transaction history, uh, both of that 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 niche in the area, but also that site as well, to be able to go back. We have a suite of tools that allow you to go back, for instance, and when you come across a site that you like, you can then research the actual seller, and you can see whether or not they've sold any sites in the past. You can see every comment that's been made by a buyer before or after the transactions, um, for the last three, it's actually closer to four years now, yeah. um, of every transaction that they've ever done. And that's across any network that they're in. Yeah. So, again, the, the key for evaluation, this is your safety net right here. <clears throat> this is this is really, it's like putting on your seatbelt. This is exactly what you need to have. Uh, then we're going to talk about how to do the deal. And this really is, this is all about win-win. Really, you know, we're, I gave you a musical um, uh, clue here because, quite frankly, I want you to be able to, to get involved. But... While you may have the – whoops. Oh, no. Hang on a second. I've got a little bit of a problem here. Let me just quickly close this up. Uh, give me one second, you guys. See if I can actually can bring it back to power. Here we go. Okay. I have just some kind of weird problem with Chrome. Okay. So anyway, we're going to take the emotions out of the, out of the, uh, the, the situation. Um, and again, we're going to buy it on its benefit, not on – on emotion, right? Uh, we're also going to learn how to buy below market value so that we were getting the best deal. Uh, we're going to look at, at some basic va uh, acquisition strategies and steps you can use and then how to fund those deals. Um, and this is the part I love the most because I like making solid deals and I like funding them with other people's money. So we're gonna, we're, you're going to be able to learn how to do that. Um, there's great ways to do it. Then, of course, let's grow the deal. Now, we talked a little bit about the possibility of, of just buying it, maintaining it, but I'm, a, I'm big about growth, so we'll take a look at what the opportunities are and look at what I call the ultimate profit formula. Then some strategies on how to increase value, but I'll tell you what, I mean, you, we can now, because we have a growing business, we can go in and we can fine-tune these things like, like, a, like a race car, and that's going to make – That'll probably, well, I won't even give you numbers, but that will dramatically increase your yields. Uh, we'll talk about deal flipping, uh, but at the end of the day, we don't really want you to flip deals. We want you, but again, if it doesn't fit you and it's something you're not enjoying, then get rid of it. But if it's making you money, keep the money for heaven's sakes. Then we're also going to look at automation because this, you're in a technology business. As much as you can automate, the better. It, it, you know, you may make a couple of dollars less, but you have the freedom. Remember, we want you to be a totalpreneur. We want you to be able to go visit the Great Wall of China or, or ride a camel in Morocco or you know, spend the summer at the beach and not think about how to actually uh, do all this stuff. Okay, That's the whole key about outsourcing and so on. Uh, and then duplication, taking that site and moving across channel, whether it be into a different niche or a different geographic area or changing language. Generally, it's a geographical thing so we, we look at if you've got a site for instance that's working really well in Australia um, it may be an e-commerce store selling baby related stuff um, you can take that exact formula that you're using in terms of the actual site itself and the suppliers and all that and you can translate that into another territory like the US and you know that you've got a proven product that's worked really well this is the key you've got a proven business that's been working really well for quite some time, duplicating that is a whole lot easier than starting a new business. Sure is. And you've already got the momentum. So we'll look at how that plays out. And then we'll go to module five, remind your business. 
Uh, you're going to mind your own business is what you're going to do. Uh, we'll, we'll go through the basic business structure and to make sure that, again, it's set up properly for you, um, how you can outsource for success, choosing the right vendors to work with. There's, that's key, okay, because, again, those people are going to help build, your, build yourself. Um, and then best practices for doing all that. Now, that's just the beginning of your relationship with us in the inner circle. Then you get to become part of the Facebook community. Now, we believe that that because this is fundamentally important, you're going to get to be in the community, get to ask questions, get to get going to get to network with people that are actually doing this on a regular basis. Eric's in Facebook a lot. I mean, when he told me um, uh, at dinner last night, he had like 400 plus people, you know, liking and commenting on the wedding pictures. <clears throat> Actually, like, it turned out to be around about all up, around about 2,000 likes. Wow. So um, that's just my personal. Yeah. Thing. So so the key is that having a community like this can really be helpful. And, and Eric's very involved in it. I'm not a big Facebook guy, as most of you know. Uh, but the key is if you need help, you've got the site to help. You've got people to help you with. Um, you get to connect with buyers and sellers, of course. Get your questions answered, but not just from Eric but also from, from Eric's top coaches and from your, your fellow investors, So that way you're really going to be able to stay up to date uh, and consistent. So that's, and that's available, of course, 24 seven. Then you're going to get weekly live Q and a sessions. That's $129 a month value. You'll get six months of those calls absolutely free. And frankly, Eric's discovered that, that you don't really need to be on. Most people don't stay on the calls more than about six months anyway. Generally, they've figured it all out and then moving forward or yeah. they've decided to do something else. Yeah. Like I said, this our, our <clears throat> action rates around about 40%. So. We're teaching you to fish so you can fish for a lifetime. So, you know, so the call is a great way to get started and interact on a verbal basis, but you'll spend a lot of time in the Facebook group and using that. You're also going to get the ultimate buyer's checklist, and that's a $50 value. That's going to come with your program. And what's even better than that is you're going to get started with this with a one-on-one -on -one strategy session. So that way you'll be able to get clear on your own specific needs. How are you going to do your financing? What's, what, what kind of sites will be best for you? What are you going to look for that's going to serve you better? Do you want to be buying traffic or do you want to be buying for cash flow? Or you know, what are you doing right now that you want to leverage together? So this strategy session, more than any, I think, any other strategy sessions that have been offered to you in the past, I think will have the most impact because it will relate directly to what you're going to do and what, what kind of sites you're going to be buying. How to move forward. Yeah, exactly. So that's a $500 value. You're going to get that as well. Uh, and then you're going to get access to the Intervestor Toolbox. And in the Intervestor Toolbox, um, that's that's huge because there's a lot of evaluation tools in the toolbox and you get to fine tune. Now, here's what, when I asked Eric about this, here's what the toolbox is really all about. Just like you and I, we love getting tools and, I'm, and we spend a lot of money on tools. And Eric is one of those kind of people. So what he's been able to accumulate are some of the subscription tools that you would have to buy individually, but you're now going to be able to access Eric's access to save you, at this point, 50 bucks a month of third-party resources. Well, for instance, you can run a whole bunch of SEM rush uh, reports on websites. So you can kind of look at what, how well it's been SEO'd um, and, and how, how well it's standing up. But Essentially, the Investor Toolbox is a discovery tool. Um, you, we showed you how you can get into Flipper, for instance, and we showed you a couple of other different websites um, that also are selling uh, selling websites. Website selling websites a bit of a conundrum. <laughs> um, but uh, what the tools does is it actually pulls from I think it's I think it's 20 different sources now, but don't quote me on that. Um, but we basically kind of reach out into the web and find opportunities in websites, in mobile apps, um, from the networks that are selling them and also from a bunch of brokers as well. Awesome. And so we, and then we pull that all into one place where you can search for websites, search for mobile businesses. You, you can search for uh, domain names even with our tools, um, you know, used expired domain names, for instance. Um, and then also there's a bunch of evaluation tools already built in um, and we also have uh, as have a, a bunch of 
seller evaluation tools in there as well, so you can you can look up what the seller's been doing and all of that sort of thing. Cool. And then it gets even better because then you get the inner circle member resources, which frankly is priceless because when you take a look at just just the document library, which includes the, the purchase agreements and, and and due diligence agreements and so on, contractor that, agreements, all sorts of different. Stuff. Yeah, I mean thousands thousands of dollars went into designing those, so you get to you get to jumpstart past that. So that document library is going to be huge for you, really really important. Then we've also we've also got preferred listings that will be posted in the resource area as well. So you can you can actually do a shortcut and look through some of the preferred brokers that we work with, and they'll have listings posted in there. Uh, and then as we do different events with with, with different people that uh, are helping our members grow, you'll get access to that as well. And then Eric's got a brand new book called The Intervestor. The Intervestor, <laughs> and you'll get access to that as well. Uh, and that's and that's in pre-publication, so you're going to get access to that, to that also, which is kind of cool. Uh, but then it gets even better. Uh, the, the the DFY VIP membership, DFY stands for done for you, of course, and we know because we know you, we know you don't want to do all the work yourself. We know you want to, you want the easy button because we want to get easy cash flow. So we're going to get you help on getting your needs assessments done, your due diligence done, your site management, your site transfers. Uh, we'll get, we'll get you access to our preferred vendors and uh, preferred pricing. Now that would normally be a $500 membership, less than $50 a month, uh, to be a member of, of that kind of VIP group, you're getting that absolutely free. Now, obviously, for what you're, you're going to pay for what you use, but you'll be able to to, uh, to access that at our preferred pricing with vendors you know you can count on. Most of the time, it's our team. Yeah, great. Yeah, most of the time it's going to be it's going to be our group that does it for you. Uh, so that's going to be good too because we're all on the same. I'm not on the same page. Well, for instance, our SEO team, uh, not just standard SEO people, um, our SEO lead is one of the best growth hackers I know, um, and and our other people are trained by him. Yeah, so, so it's it's very cool. I mean, because again, we're looking at a different way of doing business now. We're not looking at startup. We're looking at enhancement, which is a completely different way of playing SEO. To me, I never bothered with SEO in my businesses <laughs> because I didn't have the traffic to care about it. I didn't have, I didn't, I mean, an SEO takes a while, but in a business that's already there and it's got years of years of track record, now SEO has a much, much more uh, important meaning in terms yeah. of great results. Well, we don't actually even do SEO, we do growth hacking. So it's like reaching out to bloggers that are influential, for instance, in, in the niche that you're in and creating re real relationships with them and, and working with them. Um, and then doing things like uh, press releases and all of these sorts of things, but really valid ones that actually have meaning. So it's not not sitting back and waiting for it to come to you. You're swimming out to the ships. The only way for the ship to come to you, you swim out to the ship. That's the idea. But here's where it gets super exciting, you guys. You know, it's great to do a lot of the stuff yourself, but I know there's people out there that that don't even want to do that. You want us to do it for you. So with Intervestor Capital, um, we put together a fund. And the, the, you get to leverage our knowledge and our connections. We're buying websites. We're buying them for our own account. And so you can be you can participate, and there's requirements to participate, um, obviously. Uh, you get to participate in the fund. Our, our average returns after expenses are 25% and up. We're only going to lowball these things, of course, for you because we want to be very conservative. Um, but it gives you access to bigger deals like our $2.6 million one that, that we already have a letter of intent on. So we're moving forward. We're raising the capital for that. And if you want to be part of, of, of a bigger play, you can. And, of course, you get to learn how it's done. Now, normally to play with an investor capital, it requires a $1,000 initiation fee. Then, of course, plus whatever you'd be investing. That's going to be waived for you when you're a member of the Inner Circle. Inner Circle people get first option on everything that we do. We tell you first. Uh, because we want you involved. We know you're effectively, um, I want to be careful how we use the term, but we consider you our partners. You know, we're in it together. Oh, the family. Yeah, it, exactly. So what is all this? How does it all add up and, and what's what's the tuition for all this? Well, let's summarize it for you. Okay, so to be part of, part of the Intervestor Inner Circle and, and play with us, Inner Circle is normally $19.95 a year, okay? Uh, and obviously with all that we do, that's a, that's a great value by itself. Uh, weekly calls, um, that six months free uh, is the value of 774. Your strategy session, we really lowball the strategy session, uh, but just putting a $500 value on that, 
Then we've got the toolbox at $600 a year. Uh, the investor resources, which frankly is thousands, it's priceless. Um, and then of course your, your, your um, VIP membership in the done for you club uh, is $500. And, uh, and, and then when we start taking a look at investor capital, we get another thousand dollars we've thrown in for waiving your initiation. That's a total value of, of over $5,000, but you know, that I never ever let you pay full retail price because we don't ever want to do that, right? That's that's practically sinful. So today we're going to give you the opportunity to join the inner circle right now for just nine ninety seven, for just nine ninety seven, which is which is a fantastic deal for you right now. And to to do that, you'll go to totalpreneur.com forward slash intervestor. Actually, sorry, tpcourses.com forward slash intervestor. I'll put that in the chat right now uh, for you guys. Uh, and, but I've got something extra special for you too. So let me just get this in the chat. There we go. Okay. But I got something super special for you. Something that we're, that is brand new. We don't even have a web page that describes it yet. Eric and I have been brainstorming this for the past few weeks and we are super excited about it because it's going to, it's going to jumpstart your success as quickly as you want. And how many of you guys want to be, want to be making money immediately? Let me see your hands. Just pop in the chat. And I'm seeing a lot of a lot of um, <laughs> a lot of yeses. So here's what we've done: we're creating the Buyers Club. We're creating the Buyers Club. Now the Buyers Club will have a $2,000 initiation fee, which will be waived for you. But what is Buyers Club? Buyers Club is about well, gee whiz, buying websites. And th to be a member of Buyers Club, you actually have to participate in the sale of a website. And our objective is to have you buying a site with us within 60 days. Now, this is almost like crowdfunding, okay? Buyers Club, again, this is brand new. No one's heard about this until right now, literally. No one's heard about this until right now. So we wanna we want to create 20 initial founding members of Buyers Club. Think about it as if it was crowdsourcing um, or, or a Groupon deal, you know, it tips over when you get to a certain number of people. Well, Buyers Club, we wanna see a minimum of 20 members and, we're, and the requirement to invest with Buyers Club is a minimum $5,000 that will be invested in a web property. So 20 members at $5,000 a piece means we can go out and pay cash for a $100,000 plus or minus website. Okay, and now we may look at two $50,000 websites if they're great. You know, the bottom line is we're gonna raise the capital to go out and buy these sites. And of course, then the profitability of the site is split accordingly based on investment. So, it, and but mind you, you're not gonna put in 50,000 into Buyers Club, you'll put in five, if you want to put in 50 or 100 or whatever you want to do you know, and, and, and use your retirement money or whatever to invest, then you would do that with a fund. This is, this is not a straight out, just throw some money in, buy and be involved. The, the idea behind Buyers Club is to actually then go through the, po the process. I will do this. I will go through the process of going out, finding a really cool site with a value of 100 to 200, 300,000 and actually go through the process of purchasing that while you guys tag along for the ride via webinar or Zoom meeting or something like that, and you can watch and, and be part of that entire process. So for instance, we'll jump on a call with the seller and go through that video walkthrough, um, which you'll be able to watch. And then at the end of the call, when, we, when I get off with the seller, we can sit and talk about okay, why did I do this? Why did I do this? Why did I say that? What, what was the reasoning behind, you know, what, what's my response to what he said in response to what I was saying and so on and so forth. So you not only get to actually participate in the deals that I'm doing, but you actually get to learn through the process of every step of what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. Um, so it's a really cool learning tool for you guys. Yeah, and and it's 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 not just a learning tool; it's a making money tool because you know we're waiving the initiation fee. So effectively, your commitment of investing five thousand dollars it's your capital. I mean, it's not like it's it's a tuition; it's paid in capital. So the cool thing is that you're going to get a return on that money. And if we're looking at a website that's going to give us just let's just use twenty five percent after expenses, for example, then that means you're going to be, you're going to be earning 25% on your $5,000, mm -hmm. which is pretty darn good for, for starters. So this gets you in the game immediately. 
and it gets you in the game without having to worry about any of the details. You don't need to know anything because you're going to get to watch exactly what we do and how we do it. And, uh, you know, as we've been, been designing this, I couldn't think of anything more exciting to be able to, to give you to create that level of success that you want. You know, because remember, at the, end of the, at the end of the day, it's it's the results that we're looking for. So, you know, bottom line, you guys, what we what you've got now is is previously a value is 5369 add the buyer's club initiation fee that we're waiving for you that brings the total value of this opportunity for you to uh, 7366 but once again your investment is 997 not per year it's 997 for life it was 997 per year it was i eric he, would, me out he was not happy with me when i said no I'm eric it's, it's 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 going to be once 997 and he may kick me around later on and say we're changing it, but it's not changing for you when you go to total to a tpcourses.com forward slash intervestor now and join us and, and enroll in the inner circle. Now, actually, if you go to the website right now, it's 1900 a year. Yeah. 1995 yeah, 19, a year. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And that's what we sell for retail. Yeah. So and and and. So I wouldn't do that. <laughs> I would go. Well, I would you won't go know you're welcome to. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> right. So so go so go do that. Go to, go to totalpreneur.com forward slash intervestor. All right. Um, what, now, when you get to to that page, it's a pretty simple page. We, we, we built that page very quickly for you. Uh, it'll take you straight into PayPal. Now, the cool thing is if you're in the U.S. and have a U.S. PayPal account, you can use the PayPal bill me later or PayPal credit to actually pay zero uh, interest on this at all. Actually, P PayPal will, will will fund it for us, or for you rather. So you can use that. Um, and if you have a PayPal account, you can use PayPal. If you want to use your MasterCard, Visa, American Express, whatever uh, card, you just pick pick that option as well. So we're processing that for you immediately. You'll then get to a confirmation page, and then we'll be manually setting up your account within the Intervestor platform um, later tonight, your time. So uh, this this is all being done manually for you. So it's, it's I mean this is the real deal. So think about this: 40% success rate beating a 1.6 or so percent success rate of other people's programs. 40% of the people that are getting involved are going to buy and and actively get a website. Now the cool thing is when you join Buyers Club, you're already buying. It's 100%. Yeah, I mean Buyers Club. If you're going to be an active member of Buyers Club, you got to play. So that that guarantees really guarantees your success. So and and like anything else that we do, you, we're going to guarantee you're happy. You got 30 days to to play with us. If you're not happy, if it's not for you, let us know. Um, you know, but th this is the, and, and by the way, we don't want you taking kicking tires. We want you to be sure. We want we don't want people that are are unsure or are worried. We don't want your last 997. If you can't pay the mortgage this month, pay your mortgage, right? We want people that are are active actively serious as business people we want to be sure that you're really in the game to win <clears throat> and if you believe this is right for you and, and that's why we brought this to you because i believe this is exactly what you need then uh, you want to play with this bottom line is you know we could give you well, there's only six seats available we could play scarcity games all day long but frankly to me at the end of the day it comes down to this what's the scarcity of your time how long have you been working on your current business how much time and money and energy and effort have you been in that business and where are you right now in your results my question for you is how soon do you want to achieve your results how soon do you want to have more cash flow how soon do you want to have more more pride and, and excitement in what you're doing bottom line is isn't it time you got started living your life your way this is investing for uh, for the rest of us you know <laughs> eric is uh, is a very serious businessman very serious businessman. He knows what he's doing, yet he lives the total printer lifestyle. I mean, he's a hippie. He lives in Bali. Um, he, he plays at the beach. He uh, is, couldn't be more serious about business, but he also is very serious about play and lifestyle. And I want you to be able to do the same, very, very, very same thing. So go to uh, tpcourses.com forward slash intervestor. Join us and we'll get you started right away. Again, it's tpcourses.com forward slash intervestor. Uh, if there are questions here, let me answer your questions now. Um, we did run a little bit longer than I anticipated. Well, we did a good bit, so thank you for sticking with us. Um, but you'll be able to get started with this immediate, immediately. So if you guys have questions, I'll be delighted to answer. Eric will be delighted to answer some of them before we let you go. So are there questions? 
And by the way, for those of you um, that are joining us, do me a favor, because again, we're, we're, we're manually processing this today. So do me a favor and just put in the, into the chat, just tell me I'm in, because I'm seeing that, um, that Lenore just said I'm in. Um, so if you if you are if you are joining us, just just tell me in the chat because again I don't have access right now to to seeing the uh, the actual emails here while I'm on the screen with you. So yep, I see Tom is saying I'm in. Uh, let me see if I can scroll up over here. Um, I have Linda is in. Congratulations and welcome. Okay, I see um, Jane is in. Fantastic. George is in. Uh, Dolores is in, Chris is in, fantastic, excellent, cool. Um, so let's see, there was another couple of questions I thought out, I thought I, I found here. Um, did this, I seem to be subscription sites, saw that, the answer is no. Remember, what you want to do is you want to look at sites that, that best serve your purposes. And you're going to either buy for cash flow, you're going to buy for, for customer base, you're going to buy for so on. So that's fantastic. Here we go. Was 25% on $5,000, no, not a monthly return, that's an annual rate of return. I would love 25% per month. Yeah, fucking uh, achieve. Yeah, that's sure. not. That's obviously not realistic. No, we're looking at annual <clears throat> APRs or ROI or on an annual basis. Joyce is in. Joyce, I, I'll tell you, I was thinking about you specifically, because for you guys in Results Club, think about this. That's instant results, right? It's absolutely perfect. And for you especially, Joyce, you know, you're trying to get your book built up, and and we've been talking about the you know the, the economics of the book. It's, the book is your passion, right? So think about, about going out to the Thriver community. The, how many people are out there that we can buy sites that relate to those folks to promote the hell out of your book? I think it's genius. Another one of our members, Jeff, uh, in Results Club, um, when Jeff joined Results Club, uh, he's, an, he's a real estate investor and uh, does real estate property management. And he's like, he wants out of it. I said, Jeff, I have the exact thing that you need. And this, is, this was back in, I guess, November, December. Um, and we were trying to get Eric on a webinar back then and couldn't, couldn't get it done uh, that quickly. But this is exactly the thing. Yeah, Joyce says exactly what I'm thinking about. This Actually, is- Joyce, we're, we're, uh, you know I mentioned the, uh, our SEO lead is a growth hacker. Um, and in fact, we're just getting ready to start um, doing the first phase of the pre-promotion for releasing the Intervestor. So if, the, if you've got a book to release, um, there's, I, I have an enormous amount of, knowledge and, and I can assist you. Joyce is, uh, Joyce is a member of Results Club Yeah, um, and she's, she's amazing. Yeah, and our systems for, for promoting books, pre-promotion of books and then post-promotion of books after they've been released um, is, is as, as contemporary and as cutting edge as you can get, basically. Yeah, it, this this is when I saw you on, I was like, oh, this is perfect for Joyce. I'm so glad you came in. This is absolutely perfect. Yeah, for for all my all my people in Results Club, this is this is about results, because again, what the way I look at it, for all of you guys, the way I look at it is is how much time is going into this. You know, Joyce. You know, when I when I talk to Joyce and she joins us on Results Club, she just finished at an airport here or there, or she travels all over and she does a lot of a lot of free lectures. To promote the book, but again, the book is it's a smaller number. So, being able to leverage that with with a giant client base that you own, and you know, rather than begging JVs, now that you have assets, they'll be begging you. Different ball game. I, I I look at this as as a much higher leverage and better use of your time and and your efforts. So, I'm looking forward to that. And and Joyce, we're thinking about how we can perhaps merge and save your time about maybe even talking to our results club members and merging them into some of the investor calls as well. You'll be in the investor in a circle calls anyway now, of course, uh, but that way, you know, I'm on 74 calls a week, which, you know, I want to be mindful of your time as well. So yeah, I think for you, it's super. I think, I think also taking a look at the rest of our members, um, uh, you know, for those that are, that are, um, you know, TJ and Catherine, where Catherine's selling physical product on Amazon, Oh my gosh, she, all she needs to do is find some more health and wellness people and build that up and she can have a whole new business independent of Amazon and they can still, they can still fulfill for her. So looking at that, I mean, it, I think it's just giant, um, you know, so that's, that's really bottom line. So, so that's, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited for you. Anybody else have any questions or anything you want to relate to your own business? Um, I think I, I, I look at this and I'm like, my God, it's beautiful. And, um, and, and again, you look, you may look today at websites um, and you may go to Flippa and you may look and go, I don't see anything that really makes any sense. 
that may be today and then tomorrow something will show up. So it's just like fishing. It's exactly like fishing. Uh, and we have multiple sites and you'll learn how, how it goes. Uh, but we're going to make sure you do it right. Uh, and then we'll, you, then you'll learn more about the financing element of it too. I, we, we just lined up a great financing source for business credit that um, there's what they do as a service to our members is, is help you obtain business credit, which does not report to your personal credit. So it's independent of that, which is great. Um, but he's got the ability for business credit cards to, to get, what he was talking about, up to about $200,000 of, of zero interest credit facilities up to anywhere from six months to a year. And then, then it rolls to, to, to different ones a year after that. So think about now that site that I talked about where, where um, uh, you used a credit card. Now, now if, it's, if it's free cash, who cares? Opportunities are just giant. So I'm looking forward to having you with us. So if there are no other questions, Joyce, congratulations. Lynn, congratulations. Felix, congratulations. Uh, really looking forward to working with you guys. And I'll tell you, I'm, I'm still learning too. This is, um, this is perfect for all of us. I, and I love it because as a real estate guy that's been involved in real estate for so long, I love the thrill of the deal. I love the thrill of negotiation of the chase. Um, it's exciting for me. And uh, I think it's going to be super exciting for you. So once again, go to tpcourses.com forward slash uh, Intervestor. Um, and uh, you'll be able to access that immediately. If, if you have any challenges, let me know. Um, has everybody got that? Let's see. How is this? Oh, how is this for novice investors, Jolene asked. Oh, my gosh. You want to answer that, Eric? Well, the, I mean, the Buyers Club couldn't be better. And, uh, and the reality is, I mean, being a novice investor in the real estate industry is probably one of the scariest things you can ever do. Um, because it's just, well, one, the entry point's so incredibly high. I mean, Ken, you can speak to this. <laughs> yeah. um, it's incredibly yeah. high. It's dangerous as daylights. And, I, I mean, for the last, well, for many years before all the prices started crashing, I was well aware that it was going to happen. And it, it was actually about five or six years late. And one of the things was that, um, you know, the banks started freeing up their lending so much. Uh, when I was, um, it's really interesting. When I was born in 1962, goodness gracious You're me, dating it's a yourself. long time I'm ago. I'm still older than you. Um, but <laughs> in that year, the average in Australia, Australia had the highest standard of living, and and, and the average house price was two to three times um, a person's net or the average wage of the time. So you could, you know, people were earning about, I think it was a, it was. 500 bucks a, a year or something like that, and the average house price was 1500 thereabouts. Um, and the reason for this was because you, you were not able to, to borrow money to buy a house. You simply couldn't do it. They wouldn't lend on a house. They'd lend on businesses. They'd lend on all sorts of things. Now you can go out and borrow insane amounts of money for a house, and, and that's why yields on houses have gone absolutely through the floor um, and why the, the the growth bubble lasted so long was because the banks were just supporting it, supporting it, supporting it to the point where they were completely unable to support it anymore because it, it wasn't viable to do so and boom, the market comes crashing down five, six years late and people really did their dough on it. Yeah. Um, now, we're, with Intervesting, with website businesses, we're in a growth market that's in a growth industry um, that's in its infancy, and so part of the reason it's a bit of a it's a bit of a wild west scenario is because the average investor actually isn't in this market. The average investor doesn't even know this market exists. In fact, when I tell people what I do, they go, oh, "Hang on," and it's what I call the initial barrier is that they're completely unaware that you can buy a standalone website business. Um, let alone make money from it. They don't just most people don't even understand this at all. And yet there's a massive market there. Yeah. So who's there? What, what, who are the people that are there? It's the smart investors, the ones that understand that retailing is shifting from from bricks and mortar businesses on it's all going online. The ones that understand that everything, all this commerce and stuff that's going on is all moving online. So where have you got to be in order to be in the right place? You've got to be online. Yeah. yeah. And, and so, so for a novice investor, it's a fantastic thing because 
one you get you, it's like it's like you know some countries don't adopt um, mobile systems initially <laughs> right yeah. and then then they do it later after other countries and they completely jump over the technology from from a few years ago and go straight into really high tech systems. And that's why countries like Tonga have better phone systems than America um, because they've just, they've, they've leapfrogged over the past technology. And so essentially you're doing exactly the same thing. You're leapfrogging over all of the, the old opportunities that really aren't that viable anymore, that aren't creating such good income streams going straight into this. Yeah. So, so the you know bottom line is is that's why we created Buyers Club first of all to get you jump started so that you don't have to worry about anything. If you if you don't want to do your own independent site first, then you know d go into us with Buyers Club, be part of what we're doing, or do both. It's entirely up to you. So that's why Jolene is perfect perfect for you and why we created Buyers Club. Uh, but to answer your next question about when the coaching sessions are, the good news for you in Australia is that we're we run both, our calls in the evening, yeah, at Sydney time. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm in Bangkok. Uh, Eric is in Bali, or right now in Bangkok with me. Uh, so we're very sensitive to you guys in Australia because, well, you know, we're closer. We're only three hours or four hours apart, depending upon time zone. So we we're managing the uh, the U.S. Australia. Uh, timing on that uh, and for the calls and the call, the call times. Yeah, our Australian timing one or, you know, Southern Hemisphere timing one works for Europe. Um, and we, and it, and actually it works for a lot of people in the US because it's before work in the morning. Yeah. Um, but uh, we were looking at putting on a second call for the US specifically that's at uh, a friendlier time in the afternoon or possibly the evening. Um, it's just for me to be really on the ball and ask and answer your questions. It, to get up at six and do that, and it's not really viable because <laughs> you're just not going to get the best of me. Yeah, it's, yeah <coughs> but and remember the other thing too is there's there's obviously lots of value in live calls, which is which is super huge. Uh, you you also should know that of course that all the calls will be recorded in the members area, so you'll have total access to them. The majority of calls have been recorded, um, yeah. but we we have gaps here and there for various reasons. Yeah, yeah. We're, 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 it's it's not a perfect world. There are times like today we lost. Um, a few seconds when we go to webinar crashed on us. So, so um, nonetheless, everything we, we do uh, as much as we can is going to be in the members area for you. The thing is um, to bear in mind is that the reason the Facebook community is there, the Facebook groups are there, is that it gives you a chance to ask any questions that you need to ask live yeah. and right there and then in, in the moment. Yeah, especially if you're, if you're doing a deal and you're, yeah. you're, you're on Flipper right now and you're looking at X, you know, XYZ and you're not sure, well, pop into Facebook yeah. and see who's there. Um, you know, and, you know, again, uh, we run weird hours. I mean, uh, unfortunately, I was up till like four o'clock in the morning the other night uh, working on, on this presentation for that matter, and so it, uh, which was exciting. Um, so, you know, we'll be on, and I'm, I'm not much of a Facebook person, as I said, but, you know, there's people on this thing all the time. Chris is asking a great question. Do we need a lot of funds over and above um, the, our 997 to engage to the fullest level? And the answer is no. Well, let me say it a different way. Uh, to engage at the fullest level is upon is your fullest level, Chris, right? So um, if you leverage and, and learn how to use the power of leverage, you will, you will, could almost need no money. And let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. I mean, for Buyers Club, we, we want a minimum of $5,000 to invest in Buyers Club. Now, I don't care if you use a credit card. I don't care if you use PayPal working capital. I don't care if you get it from your, you know, from your, 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 um, <clears throat> excuse me, from your toolkit. We have not set something up to be able to use your, your retirement accounts because we're, we're doing this more as a crowdfunding type of thing rather than the typical accredited investor scenario. So I can't answer to that. Uh, but generally speaking, five, we chose $5,000 because it tends to be manageable with someone to pump into a credit card. So that's the first piece of that. Um, if, you want to, if you want to start buying sites directly, you know, as we mentioned earlier, your, the average site on Flippa is $1,200. So you know, it's not like you need a lot of cash. You can go, you can go ahead and – and pick up a few websites, and then go slowly. You know, you know, buy a site for a thousand dollars, make you know a couple hundred bucks a month or whatever, um, and and then use that money to buy the next one. Or you can do what I suggested, which was to use a credit card and buy the site and let the credit card let, let the cash flow from the site pay the credit card fee. Or you can go ahead and, and you know use some other types of financing. Or heck, you can partner with somebody. When I was involved in real estate. When I first began, I had crappy credit. I mean, I was I I come out of a bankruptcy, so I had no credit, I had no cash, I you know I was a mess, you know in that state, right? So what did I do? 
what I did was I found someone who, who wanted to make money on real estate. They didn't have the time to, to work on anything. They wanted, they wanted to, um, they wanted to go ahead and, and make money. So my deal was I'd find the property, I'd negotiate it, I'd fix it up. I would do the rehabbing and be responsible for that. I mean, I, uh, I, you know, I, I general contracted that we resold the property and we split the profit 50, 50. I had no cash in. I did all the work. So bottom line, Chris, is if, if cash is any kind of a, of, of, a, of a challenge, you can work with it with a partner. If I can pipe in there for sure. a bit. <clears throat> um, Intervestor is a constantly evolving uh, program. It does, it's not like we kind of created it and then just set and forget and follow the formula. Um, the reason for Buyers Club coming into existence was that we wanted to create a scenario where you could learn and at the same time, you could actually build an asset. And uh, because, you know, there are hurdles, right? There, there are some fear barriers to get through when you go it alone. Um, and, and I've been sort of constantly, the, the reason we have a 40% action rate is because I'm constantly working on ways to make it so that everybody gets a chance to succeed at this. And, and you know, our average is 20 times the, the, in, the uh, industry average. And I'm pretty proud of that, but I actually want to, I want it to be 70 or 80 percent. Um, and the way I see that is to actually create the buyers club where it's 100 percent. It makes it happen. It's 100 yeah. percent. Everybody's going to, everybody's going to win at this. And um, so, but there is, you know, there is a, there is a commitment that needs to be made there. Um, but we've kept it really low. Um, and I believe that 5,000 is really low. Mm -hmm. And, and by the way, it's not something. In other words, if you don't want to participate in buyers club, you don't have to. No, you don't have if, to. It's, we're, we're, you know, if someone wants to come in off the street, it's two thousand dollars to play, okay? Because that takes care of. We have to. We, have, we still have to have the foundation of training people. So, because, but because you're inner circle, you're already getting that. You, you know, you're already part of that. So we're waiving that because we rather we want you. We want you in. And I'll let you in on a little secret. The bigger play for us, and you know, we remember we talked, well, you're going to learn about back the back end. The bigger play for us is that we've got the fund that we've got, Intervestor Capital. We want to be working with with, with giant funding sources. We, I mean, we're we're looking to turn that into a public fund at some point in the future. Well, actually, I'm being I'm being watched by a UK based fund at the moment, and they're just basically looking at what our performance is like. But these guys invest a minimum of a hundred million dollars and they have a very strong interest in what we're doing. Yeah. Um, now they were introduced to me by a funding group out of, uh, or fund, funding managers out of Austria who the guy happens to be, yeah, Ken's mentioned I have a global lifestyle. We have an, we have an apartment in India um, and one of my neighbors there is, uh, is a fellow who uh, just financed the world's largest building project. It's, uh, it's a $180 billion building project in Northern Africa um, for the European market. Yeah. And uh, he's introduced me to this fund and a couple of others as well. So our bigger play is not, is not about um, <laughs> teaching how to invest. It's actually about building up our fund. It, yeah, it's doing, um, it's doing it. it but it's doing it. For me, the, the, the education part of it is really important because People need to learn what it actually means. What, what, you know, why, why is investing even there? Yeah. And and this education part is a, is a major component. Well, of that. well, it's 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 our passion. First of all, those of you that know me know that that's really important to me. But we want you to be able to grow that you can participate in a hundred million dollar deal with us. You know, if if you're if you're making the kind of money that we want you to be making, then you know, and you want to live the lifestyle of of the totalpreneur, then you may not want to be spending a whole lot of time checking the markets. You know, I mean, people that, that do stocks and securities, that's a daily task to make sure you don't lose any money. But the beauty of intervesting as an investor to me is that it's much, much less time sensitive. You know, you can, you can be on a plane for 12 hours and, and be, and be confident to know that your business is still there. <laughs> you know, the market didn't crash, right? So our game, our game is really, it's a, it's a much bigger play and we want you to be part of that journey. So, You'll start out with wherever you want to start out. You know the training, the, the inner circle piece is only nine ninety seven, and everything after that is an, is is really geared towards uh, investing. 
you know, it's really geared towards making money. Um, we have we have another program that we're setting up. We're doing we're going to be yeah, doing a the retreat. The short answer is, this is an investment strategy. Yep. Okay. So yep. yes, you do need to have you, you do need to commit some more funds um, towards your own investments, towards your own future. Um, and it's not just education, and yeah. it's not just about oh, here we we'll give you more information and then go out and do it. That's why we've created the Buyers Club. Yeah, the big dif- the big difference, and I know I'm beating this up, but I'm passionate about it, is we're not saying buy another course. We're saying buy a property. We're saying buy, buy an income-producing website. That's what we're saying because uh, that's – that's and that's all you. So are there any other questions before we say goodbye? I know we went a bit longer than, um, than anticipated, and my, my apologies, but thanks for sticking with us. Uh, congratulations to the many of you that, uh, that are joining in with us. I'm very excited, looking forward to, to our, our first – uh, first call with Buyers Club and and on and on. Uh, this is going to be fantastic. Uh, Jolene says thanks for answering her questions. <laughs> Jolene, where are you based? I'm curious as to where you are today. Um, so I know many people here from all over from all over the world. So really excited. Oh, you're in Brizzy. Okay, fantastic. So perfect. Yeah, I, I finally made it to Gold Coast about two months ago for my first time. I'm an so. ex-Byron boy. Are you? Are you from Byron? Yeah. I didn't realize you were from Byron. Cool. So yeah, so so uh, this is we have people from the U.S. now, from Australia, and again from around the world. So um, thank you for being for being part of the inaugural uh, release of Buyers Club. Um, if you know people, by the way, that would benefit from this, let me know. Um, give them the link to registration here. We're going to we will have a replay available for those that uh, that weren't able to make it, and also if you want to hear this again, you're welcome to uh, to do that. Uh, and um, I guess that's it for now. And um, by the way, we will get you the the infographic uh, over the next uh, next day or so. So um, that said, yeah, there's one other little thing because we're doing this manually. Um, it may take a couple of hours or maybe a few hours uh, to add you into the investor system. Yeah. So yeah. So please bear with. Yep. Yep. So that's that's it for <clears throat> that's it for now. We, our integrations are in process, but right now we we are we are doing it manually. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us. Looking forward to uh, to being with you in Buyers Club. Can't wait to uh, to see what uh, what you guys come up with and what you find. Uh, and by the way, you may also find that that um, you find a site that's interesting that you don't want to do on your own or can't do on your own for whatever reason, and want to bring that into Buyers Club for us to consider. You think we might consider that, Eric? Oh yeah, <laughs> of course. It's actually we pegged it at twenty people because that number that. Um, one hundred to three hundred thousand dollar is actually my favorite place to be buying websites. They're the best deals. They have the uh, really good levels of security. Um, they're usually fairly well established. They've generally been set up well. Um, to get to that size, they need to be decent businesses. Um, and but most importantly, they have the best yields. And often they have really, really good traffic that comes along with it. Now, in the buyers club, some of the things we'll be doing is um, we'll be looking at what opportunities there are for for everybody that's involved in the ownership of that site to actually push their stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, we'll we'll commit some advertising space and stuff like that directly for members at free of charge, um, so that you can take advantage of the traffic that's being generated by those sites. It's going to be fun. It's going to be a great ride. So, you guys, thank you so much for joining us. We will see you again soon. Uh, make it an amazing day if you're uh, out here in Asia with us and if uh, you're back in, uh, on the other side of the, of, the, of the planet. Have a great night. Take care. And uh, for those of you in the States, uh, happy um, – um, I have no idea. In, in, so. No, it's I know. I'm like, what holiday is it? Oh, yeah, it's it's Independence Day. Happy <laughs> happy Ju- happy July Fourth weekend. <laughs> I will admit, I am going to a Fourth of July party uh, tomorrow. So because um, it is tomorrow for us. Thank you guys. We'll see you soon. Be good. Take care and bye bye.